second call is meeting to order. Good evening, folks. We are going to be following three agendas this evening. We're going to be call, uh, following a special council meeting agenda. That will be followed by our Committee of the Whole, which will be followed by our council meeting. With that, I will ask Councillor Frank Danch to give us the opening prayer, followed by Mr. Joe Longfellow with the National Anthem. Councillor Danch. Thank you. Well done as always. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My pleasure as always. Members of Council, if I can have a mover and seconder to confirm the agenda, please. Councillor Danch, Councillor Elliott, questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That will be carried. Thank you. Are there any disclosures of interest this evening? <coughs> With none, we will move on to the public hearing under the Planning Act, proposed amendment to the Downtown Central Business District. Community Improvement Plan under Section 28 of the Planning Act, Department of Planning and Development Services, Report Number 2011-74. And once again, the subject is an amendment to the City of Port Coburn Downtown Central Business District Community Improvement Plan. Mr. Aquilina, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening to you, members of Council, staff, and those in attendance this evening. The purpose of this meeting is held pursuant to Section 17 and 28 of the Planning Act. It is to consider a sixth incentive for the downtown central business district community improvement plan mr Media, mr mayor excuse me the method of this meeting was given in accordance with section 1722 of the planning act and section 3 of ontario regulation 543/06 the notice was placed in the newspaper the niagara this week on september 1st and the post uh, the notice also excuse me was advertised on the city's website there have been no written comments to the proposed amendment to the community improvement plan. The explanation to be followed this evening, Mr. Mayor, is I will present the sixth financial incentive program. We will then open the floor for those members of council or yourself who would like to add any questions or comments to that proposal. We will then open up the meeting to those members of the public that wish to address council. I will then give the notice respecting written requirements for passage of the proposed amendments and I'll give an explanation of future meetings to consider this proposed amendment to the community improvement plan. This time Mr. Mayor I would like to briefly present the financial incentive program. Council will recall the direction to proceed with the proposed amendment. What this will do it will be able to have property owners have second floor commercial space new or revitalized space on the second floor for commercial purposes. The incentive program would allow property owners to take advantage of $10 per square feet of commercial space for a maximum amount of $10,000. The program would also would have a maximum of four commercial units that would be able to be taken into consideration for a maximum of $40,000. Important to know for this incentive program is at the moment the region's Smarter Niagara incentive programs do not, do not match money, so the City of Port Colburn would be financially responsible for all monies through this program. The other five programs within the CIP, the region does match. So it is a hope that once the region under, undertakes their community improvement plan that this incentive program would also be matched. 
Council is aware, just briefly, the other five incentive programs, we have the planning and building fee rebate, we have the facade improvement grant, we have the residential intensification grant, we have the tax increment financing, and we have the commercial, sorry, the urban design study grant. Those are the five programs. This would be the six for the downtown community improvement plan. Mr. Mayor, that does conclude the planning and development report for that program. At this time, if any member of council would like to add further comment or any questions to myself. Thank you, Mr. Aquilina. Members of council, any questions or comments? Councillor Steele, Councillor Bodner. Thank you, Worship. Through you to, to Dan. Dan, just a question with regards to timelines. I was asked by some um, business owners downtown. If, if someone comes forward and wants to do a facade improvement but says, look, I can only afford so much this year and so much next year, are they allowed to carry that over a two-year span? And, you know, if it's, let's say it's $10,000, they say, look, I'm going to do five this year, or they get a percentage of that, and five next year they get their incentive. Or does it all have to be done at once? Mr. Jacqueline? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to uh, Councillor Steele. The thrust of the CIP is, is to try to get it all done if they can. There is a time frame to complete certain programs. There is a matching amount of monies and an application maximum that each person can apply for. So if someone was to apply for a facade improvement grant, I believe that's where you're going, we may be able to work with them if it's going to be a longer period of time. It typically is to be done within a year's time. But depending on what is proposed, then we certainly would work with them. Thank you, Mr. Aquilino. Councilor Steele. Thank you. I mean, that's exactly what I want to hear because I did read uh, or see the word flexible within our staff comments and discussion. So, yeah, I don't think we should let it go on and on and on. Um, my second question is um, with regards to properties that are under the same ownership, could be two separate businesses, yet the way our taxation is it's all one tax property, yet there's two separate businesses that go on that are, that are um, tenants of that um, property, yet they are two separate buildings. Would they separately apply, or does it, is it based on our tax rule where it shows it as one taxed property, even though they are two distinctive buildings? Mr. Aquilino? Through Mr. Mayor, it is based on ownership. So if there's two properties, same ownership, they would be able to apply for two programs, two okay, applications. Okay, so each building be can be applied yes. on its own, regardless yes. of how the tax rule reads. Correct. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bonner? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Dan. Dan, uh, the second story commercial space, is uh, that dependent on whether it's handicapped accessible or not? Does that come up anywhere in the process? Mr. Aquilino. Through Mr. Mayor. No, it is not, <coughs> Councillor. Uh, once you have an existing building, the code does not require it to be handicap accessible. And now, if one wants to propose that, then we would certainly allow that to be considered under that application, but there is no requirement to ensure that, yes, you need to have accessibility in order to get our, get those monies. Council? That's fine. Members of Council, any further questions or comments? The only question I have, Dan, is uh, with respect to the other CIPs throughout the community, Main Street, Gateway CIP, and the others that we have established, is this consistent with those in terms of the grants and, and uh, incentives being offered? No, Mr. Mayor, this is the only program that has been proposed, and that was the direction of council. No other CIPs have this program, but if council would like us to consider that on a go-forward basis or on a retroactive basis to the other community improvement plans, mm -hmm. that we would have to deal with that accordingly and okay. go back and amend those as well, or for the Main Street one. But at the moment, the Main Street one does not have this program in place. Okay, members of council, I would like to keep, for you to keep that in mind and for consideration. Uh, with respect to, uh, uh, I won't go to the retro part of it, but I'll say moving forward with respect to other CIPs that we have and are going to be establishing. Uh, the whole concept of, of CIPs, of course, is to add that incentive to then instigate more development within those specific areas. So I would, I would ask that you give that some thought and possibly in the future bring back those amendments for, the, for planning staff to consider. Any further questions or comments from council? With none? Uh oh. Go ahead, Councillor Kenny. Thank you for bringing that up, Your Worship. So, Mr. Aquilina, can we bring that up now can, for your report coming forward? Mr. That, Aquilina? that be considered? Mr. Mayor, I would suggest to do that after this public meeting is concluded, to bring that up in an open session of Council for direction. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kenny. 
Members of Council, no further questions or comments? Mr. Aquila. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I would like to read the following before we open it up to those members of the public. If a person or a public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the City of Port Coburn before the proposed amendment to the Community Improvement Plan is adopted, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the City of Port Coburn to the Ontario Municipal Board. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the City of Port Coburn before the proposed amendment to the Community Improvement Plan is adopted or approved, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Municipal Board unless in the opinion of the Board there are reasonable grounds to add the person or public body as a party. Mr. Mayor, if I may, I would like to open up the meeting for those members of the public that wish to address Council. Thank you, Mr. Ackland. Are there any members of the public that would like to address Council on this particular issue? With none, Mr. Aquilina. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There is a sign-in sheet for those members of the public that wish to be notified. It is in the back there, so please sign that, and you will be assured to receive notice. would like to read the following, Mr. Mayor. If you wish to be notified of the adoption of the proposed amendment to the Community Improvement Plan, you must make a written request to the clerk. Only those persons and public bodies that give the clerk a written request for the adoption of the bylaw will be given such notice. Mr. Mayor, I will have the recommendation report on this proposal for the October 11th 2011 council meeting for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Aquilina. Well done. And uh, I'm sure I speak for all of council when I, when I state that uh, we look forward to this incentive package coming forward. Wonderful job, as always. Thanks, Dan. Members of council, I need a motion to adjourn this portion of the meeting, please. Councillor Bodner. Councillor Demaray. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That will be carried. So now I'm going to open up the committee of the whole meeting. And if I may do that, and before I go into the introduction of addendum items, I do want to introduce to City Council our new town crier. Our town crier, as you know, is uh, going to be on the agenda this evening. And I'll invite Dr. Tom Picar to come out in front of members of council to make presentation to the city. now Port Colburn, the Neff steam buggy was conceived and built by Benton Neff. Huffing and puffing about town, terrorizing chickens, horses, and mule. Children shouted, young men envied, and women swooned at the unnatural speed of 15 miles an hour. Mothers feared their daughter's virtue could be damaged by losing their hats. Little did they know what the future might bring when the back seat was added. Ontario's oldest surviving automobile now shines in its birthplace, two huffs from its first puff. God save the Queen! As members of uh, Council recognize from past discussions, uh, I, I, I guess I give Mr. Heil a lot of credit for this, for recruiting a new uh, a town crier, but Mr. Picar was, uh, was here during Canal Days and was asked to be uh, Port Coburn's new town crier, and it's my privilege and honor on your behalf, members of council, but more importantly on behalf of the entire community uh, this evening to welcome Mr. Picar to our team and to, uh, of course, uh, crown him as Port Coburn's newest addition to the team as our town crier. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, 
Members of Council, Mayor Badway, it's a privilege for me to be able to stand before you and to participate in this. Uh, I live in Virgil, I work in St. Catharines, and I did work in uh, Welland for a number of years. And, you know, we're one big neighborhood. And we play here, we work here, uh, we're in town uh, regularly three or four times a month visiting friends, and cycling, which is one of our favorite activities. Uh, so I'm looking forward to spending a lot of time getting to know each of you on a one-to-one on -one basis, and of course all the members of the committee. Uh, can I tell my B story? Yeah. Okay. Um, at, at Canal Days, uh, I was approached by someone who said, you know, uh, we need you to form a committee. Uh, and I said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, you know, the, the um, the hockey arena really needs to be repainted. And I said, so? He says, look, we'll get a bunch of guys, and we'll get some paint and a couple of boxes of beer, and we'll have this done in a weekend. And I said, great. Okay, sure. Right behind him, a fellow came and said, look, you know, I need you to form a committee. And I said, well, what? And he says, well, we need to plant trees. And I said, well, how are you going to do this? And he says, well, the city wants $500 a piece to plant trees. I got a buddy who can get trees, like, for 20 bucks a piece. All we need is a half a dozen guys, a pickup truck, and a couple of boxes of beer and we can have this done in a weekend. So I was able to email with, with B, and I said, you know, B, this is a really interesting proposition, but I don't have the authority to make these kinds of decisions. And so she emailed back and said, well, I do, and my vote is Coors Light. <laughs> so on that vein, I'd like to just propose I'm going to continue my, my, my interactions with, with, with Council and with the wonderful city of Port Colborne. And thank you very much for the privilege of representing you uh, in the Ontario Provincial Championships, uh, in the um, cry-off in Ingersoll, where I took third place, the cry-off in Orangetown, or Orangeville, where I took uh, second place, and on Saturday in the Grape and Wine Festival Parade. So, uh, as I say, it's a privilege for me to be able to do this on behalf of the city. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Dr. Picker. And I have to say, uh, I echo the comments that you made about being one large community. Although we are 12 smaller communities here in the Niagara region, we are one large community of Niagara. And uh, regardless, we're all in it together. And, and to have you here as our town crier is a privilege and honor. And we look forward to working with you. Members of Council, I'll now move on to the introduction of addendum items this evening. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There are none this evening. Thank you. Members of Council, motion to confirm the agenda, please. Councillor Demeray, Councillor Butters. <laughs> Questions or comments? All in favor? Opposed? That will be carried. Disclosures of interest. Are there any disclosures of interest this evening? With none, we'll move on to items requiring a separate discussion. Members of Council, Councillor Bodner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item one. Do I have a motion to accept the remainder of the items? Mr. Howe? Number 11. Number 11? Pull it. Okay, thanks, B. Members of Council, any further items? Members of staff, any items that you require being pulled this evening? With none, motion, Councillor Butters, Councillor Demeray, for the, following, for the remainder of the items. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That will be carried. Thank you, members. We'll now move on to presentations. And we have as our first presentation, Ms. Joanne Ferracholi. Joanne, as you know, is our Health Services Coordinator for the City of Port Coburn. And she has brought with her this evening Dr. Jeff Remington and Dr. Carl Sobey. I don't think Dr. Everson's here. I don't see her. Uh, regarding the interprofessional care pilot project that has just begun here in the city of Brook Auburn, Joanne is always welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor Badaway, uh, members of council, uh, staff, it gives me a great deal of pleasure, pleasure to kick off the official um, announcements of our interprofessional care pilot project here in the city of Port Colborne. We are extremely excited. We've come a long way already. We have a lot of work to do, um, but we're a great team and we're going to get the job done. This is a physician-led project. Um, it's led by Dr. Jeff Remington, 
Dr. Carl Stoby and Dr. Jennifer Everson. So I'm going to leave the presentation up to them. Since it is a physician-led project, um, I would really, I'm very excited to have them explain to you what we're about and what the project is going to, where the project is going to lead us. It's going to lead us down a, a wonderful road. So um, with that being said, I'd like to introduce Dr. Carl Stoby, who is from the De Michael G. DeGroot School of Medicine, Niagara Campus, and um, he's going to tell you a little bit more. Thank you, Joy. Dr. Stoby, welcome. Thank you. Well, I want to express my, uh, my thanks to the town of Port Colborne uh, for financially supporting this idea. I think that uh, what's needed in Ontario is a new model of primary care, one that is, uh, encompasses a number of health professions all working together uh, for the betterment of the health of the patient. And um, it seems to me that there's an opportunity for this to be modeled and I thought that uh, it would make sense to look around for a community that might, might have the, the, the interest to, um, to engage in this sort of thing, a pilot, to see how, this could better, how we could better serve the needs of the people of Ontario. Um, and of course, your council uh, was very enthusiastic in supporting this, and uh, I'm very pleased that uh, Dr. Remington has, uh, has agreed to lead this. He's a faculty member in our campus at McMaster um, and in Niagara. And uh, I've known Dr. Remington for some time and uh, have been, uh, been talking to him about the, uh, the initiation of this and he's going to tell you a lot more about it, but I'm very, very thrilled. I think there's an opportunity really to reform primary care in Ontario and to provide equitable, equitable services to all people in Ontario, uh, regardless of where they live and where their family doctor is. And I'm hoping that this provides the model that the rest of Ontario will be able to follow. So I'll, uh, I'll just turn it over to Jeff, who's been doing all the work. Thank you, Carl. Dr. Remington, welcome. Thank you. I think I've been here before. A few times. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak tonight and to brief you on what is a Port Colborne Interprofessional Care uh, pilot project. Um, how do I advance the slides? So you're using this PC technology. We're all Macs at the office. So before I start uh, telling you the nitty-gritty of the project, I want to tell you a little bit about my day today in the office. So up on the slide is a picture of young Jeremy. Jeremy and his family are new to Port Colborne. They moved here uh, this summer. Um, Jeremy's had a little bit of a tough time with the transition. Uh, he's been acting out at school. And this morning, Jeremy came to school and threatened a little girl and said that if she didn't do what he said, um, he'd stab her with a knife. So Jeremy's principal um, asked that he leave school and told his parents, you need to take him to the family doctor. He needs to get counseling before I can let him back in the school safely. Uh, Jeremy's parents there, Dave and Joanne, uh, Dave's been pretty stressed out by all of this. Uh, he actually was in the urgent care center on the weekend with stress and some chest pain. And so he's hoping, he came to see me as well and said, maybe you can find me some counseling as well. And Joanne, uh, Jeremy's stepmom, says if things don't get better, she's going to move back to Waterloo where they came from. And uh, so she's hoping that the whole family can get counseling. So they came to me looking for some family counseling, some, some child counseling. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't have that uh, available to me here in Port Colborne. This is Judy. Judy's 42 years old. Uh, Judy had a heart attack a couple weeks ago and ended up in the Hamilton General Hospital. She had coronary angiography and she had stenting. She was discharged home. Uh, she was told by a discharge planner that, oh, you'll, you'll, you need some cardiac rehab. Um, she's diabetic. She's a bit overweight. She smokes. So they said, you know, you need to see somebody to help control all those things. Uh, all these services that she was told that she would have, it's been about a month since she was discharged, and she hasn't heard anything. So she came to see me today to find out what, what services are available to her here in Port Colburn uh, to meet her needs uh, after being discharged from hospital. And she wonders why sort of the ball's been dropped. You know, she t was heard all these things in hospital that would happen. Uh, but so far, she's heard nothing since she's been home. This is Edna. Edna's really sweet. Edna lives down uh, in the southwest corner of Port. She's getting a up, in, up in years. Um, her son came in from Vancouver, and he's a little bit worried about her. She's been falling a lot lately. Um, she's having trouble uh, maintaining herself on her own. She lives in one of those nice, beautiful ho homes, I think down on Stanley or Linwood. The bathroom's upstairs. She's having trouble getting up the stairs. Uh, she's got really bad emphysema, and it's been a really tough summer for her. It was so hot and humid. Her breathing's been really bad. She's been in and out of, uh, in and out of the urgent care center and in and out of Welland Hospital as well. So, you know, the son's here from Welland. He's, he, they brought her in to see me today and said, you know, are there, are there any services that we can access? You know, she's, she's older. 
know, what's available in Port Colborne? And I, I kind of shrugged my shoulders and said, I, I, I don't really know that there's anything available to us here for her. So that's a bit of what we face as family doctors every day here in Port Colborne. Um, not only the challenges of medical illnesses to identify, diagnose, and treat, but these days there's a lot of social issues around patients. Uh, there are a lot of other caregivers that can help us treat patients. And unfortunately here in Port Colborne, we don't have the same sorts of access to those caregivers that other folks in other communities have. Um, so what we've been charged with under the vision of, of Dr. Stoby and Dr. Everson at the Lynn uh, and, and our mayor um, is, is to put together a project that looks at these gaps in care, that's physician driven. So as physicians, we help identify what's missing, what we could use in our practices, what would help us better serve our patients. Uh, and, and bring those professionals together here in Port Colborne under an allied model. Um, there are models like this that exist in the province, things like community health centers, like Bridges in Town, that services a very focused number of patients. There are things called family health teams in other communities uh, that unfortunately you know, we don't have access to here. We applied years ago and were turned down. So we'd like to see some of these, these inequities and these barriers uh, fixed. So as I said, the key stakeholders uh, thank you to the mayor and to council for having the vision to support this both you know in name but also financially and and uh, uh, now I'm uh, under your direction to, to lead this project um, could not have a better uh, right hand although she'd probably say I'm her right hand uh, in Joanne who's who's a great support um, and really has a good handle on the issues and uh, I think has a good handle on me um, and then you know the, the support of the Lynn and both the medical school you know folks that that also want to see us be able to provide better primary care to the patients of Port Colburn. There are a lot of other stakeholders and, and enablers, people that we, we look to partner with uh, to make this happen. The, the screen shows you just a few, um, you know, bridges in, in town, the hospital, pharmacies. Um, Clinical Connect is a new initiative. You know, we've heard all the bad things about e-health and and this, there are now some good things happening with e-health and, and Clinical Connect is one of them. Um, if you gave me a laptop right now, I can log in and if you were in any hospital in the Lynn, I can now pull up your x-rays, your blood work, uh, your dictations. We are starting to see the connection, the interconnectivity of caregivers. This project is going to need their help to connect us all together. OTN is the Ontario Telehealth Network. Again, you know, it's very optimistic to think that we can bring in services and people right here to our community, but with modern technology and telehealth, we can actually link caregivers through video teleconferencing uh, rather than having to actually transport people here. And this list is by no means complete. As the days go on, as this project goes on, there are all sorts of people that are looking to partner with us. Uh, CCAC, uh, public health, all, all kinds of great folks that want to be part of this innovative project. Our goals are multifold. Uh, we want to create a new and an innovative model. Um, some people say, why do we new, new, need a new healthcare model? There's, there's a whole bunch out there. The doctors say, God, I, I can't keep track of what's out there already. Well, no one model fits everybody. And our community it does not fit the current models that are out there. And same with a lot of other communities. Uh, we want to, to build something that can be more than just Port Colborne. Um, you know, ideally, 10 years from now, they'll talk about the Port Colborne model. Uh, so we'll see where this goes. Um, of course we want to improve patient care. That's why we're all in this. We want to improve the, the access of the patient support Colburn to services that they need in primary care. But we also want to make sure that the healthcare professionals uh, are well served. The first example I gave you, and I should say that none of those are real patients, but they illustrate the types of patients that this project is going to serve. You know, young Jeremy, I, they're all based on real patients in my practice, and there's nothing more frustrating that when parents come in with a young child or they come in with, with social problems within the family unit. And it's great if you've got a great health care plan that, that pays for counseling. Most people in this community, there's a, they can't financially access that. As a family doctor, I'm not a counselor. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a social worker. My job is to help identify the problems and get people where they need to go, get them to the professionals that they need to see. It's very stressful for me to see that level of dysfunction in my patients that I care so much about and not be able to have them access the type of services that they need. Services that I know exist that would make them healthier, happier, and, and, and more functional human uh, individuals within this community. 
So we recognize, and that's why we've gone to the physicians and said, what is going to make your practice more functional, not necessarily easier, but decrease your workload and your stress? Um, and thirdly, we, we want to build a model that services the people of Port Colborne in an effective but also cost-effective way. Some of the models that are out there already have been identified by, by the government. They're great, but they're a bit of a Cadillac. Um, they do cost a lot of money. Uh, and we're looking to create something that's innovative, uh, that perhaps, you know, less administration, less costing to it, looking for sort of shared services where there's a shared costs as well. There are three main areas of focus of the project, and all three areas I, I, I identified in the patient uh, examples I gave you at the beginning. The first area is what I call emotional health. Now, I don't call this mental health. And I don't call this psychiatry. It's the whole spectrum of emotional health. Um, if you look in the example, I, the first example I gave you, there were several issues there. You've got, you've got young Jeremy who's having trouble at school, uh, who has some, some uh, mental health issues, that has some acting out issues. You've got the interfamily dynamics. You've got, you know, dad's under a lot of stress. He's now showing up at the urgent care center with physical symptoms. There's, there's marital issues. Uh, we see a lot of this in our day-to-day -day work. Um, you know, over the years with companies like John Deere uh, uh, going out of business and, and with the economic hardship, you know, a lot of people come into the family doctor's office because, let's face it, every time you turn around, there's a TV commercial. Go see your family doctor. You know, you show up at, at your... your your pastor's office and say, I'm under a lot of distress. Well, your pastor provides a lot of counseling, but your pastor says you need to go see your family doctor as well. At the other end of the spectrum are the chronic mental illness patients. Uh, the patients with chronic schizophrenia or chronic mental disease that do often end up revolving door through two south at Welland Hospital or that need the kind of services that seem to very much be lacking in this end of the community. And in between is everything else. The mental health patients, patients with short-term psychiatric disease, and what we're looking specifically at doing is bringing in services like social workers, uh, like telepsychiatry. It's hard to recruit new psychiatrists. I was actually quite excited today. I see that we have a new psychiatrist starting in Welland, which is fantastic. Uh, but those services are, we, we're so short of psychiatrists. And yet there are a lot of psychiatrists in places like Hamilton uh, who, again, we could benefit through resources like video teleconferencing. So these are the sorts of services there. Improve the mental and emotional health of our community. The second focus is the transition from hospital to community. Uh, back in the good old days, you know, we took care of our own patients in the hospital. So when it was time to be discharged home, the transition was smooth. I knew what, patient, what medications my patients were on and what follow-up they needed because I was the one who took care of them in the hospital as well as after they were discharged. Unfortunately now, most of our patients are admitted to places like Welland and other hospitals. They get discharged. They get discharged with a sheet of paper that says, go see your family doctor in a couple of days, and they show up, and I don't even know half the time that they were in hospital, simply because the communication from hospital to home, there's a, often a delay in paperwork, there's a lack of communication with the hospital. The CCAC and the discharge planners do a pretty decent job in setting things up, but as in the example of the young woman that had the heart attack in Hamilton, often that ball gets dropped. And unfortunately, I don't have the mitt to catch it because I don't know what I'm catching. So through partnering with agencies like CCAC, with working with the hospitals program at the, in the Niagara Health System, we aim to make that transition better, smoother, more thorough, because we want to avoid the situation like I've seen so many times this summer, where a patient gets discharged only to be readmitted to hospital within a week later because things that were supposed to have been done on the transition to home didn't happen. Um, whether it be you know, making sure that the housekeeper came in or the home care nurse came in, making sure that the medications were, were checked uh, or certain blood levels were checked and the patient subsequently deteriorates and goes back into hospital. We want to make that transition smooth. Uh, this is one that my, my office staff are thrilled about because often they get the brunt of this where the patient shows up and says, I was just discharged from Welland, and it's my office staff that have to get on the phone and call and call and call to try to get information. And the third is elder care. And this encompasses not only care of the elderly, but also care of patients with chronic disease. And this is the third example I gave you of Edna, who's failing in her home, who's falling frequently, who needs increased help with her medications, her mobility, the management of her chronic disease. In her example, it was emphysema, um, as well chronic diseases like heart failure, uh, diseases uh, like diabetes. Other communities have clinics, have services, have people that can help we need those in our community too. I don't need to tell you what the demographic looks like out there. 
Um, we have a lot of seniors, a lot of great, you know, seniors that are, 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 have a lot of vitality and want to stay in their homes. You know, we're building the health and, and, and wellness uh, campus on the east side to help them with the recreation and, and with their strength. Uh, we want to sort of supplement that with some great um, uh, seniors programs as well. So like anything else that you do in healthcare, there are bean counters, apologies to the city financial staff, um, there, and there are deliverables that we need to measure. There are outcomes that we need to show we are making a difference in, be it fewer patients winding up in the emergency departments or the urgent care, uh, fewer admissions, fewer readmissions. Um, you know, we can count the number of patients that will participate in things like telemedicine uh, consultations. And th the biggest deliverable is we want to do all this because we know that not only will it provide better patient care, but it will also decrease the cost of care. If we can keep people in their homes, if we can empower people to manage their chronic diseases, um, if we can return them emotionally and mentally to a better level of function that lets them get back to work sooner, that lets them get back to their family sooner, we know that the cost, not only to the healthcare system, but society is, is improved. Um, again, healthcare utilization is one of the ways that we can measure that. Uh, aligning services that are out there. Uh, what, what we found already in our early consultations, and we've had some fantastic early consultations. I mean, we, we've met with Bridges, we've met with the Niagara Health System, most importantly, we've met with the physicians in town. Everyone has great ideas, everyone has great input to the project. But what we've learned is that there are a lot of pockets of funding. There are a lot of programs out there that currently right now are not being utilized. Uh, there are lots of different uh, areas that we can, we can look at uh, bringing in services that, that have been identified by governments, that have been identified by leaders, but that nobody sort of championed them and said, gee, we could set that up right here in Port Colborne. You know, we've got space in Portal Village. We've got space in, in city property. We've got space in, in Dr. Remington's clinic. Let's get that up and running. Every project needs a leader, and right now, you know, through the city's uh, vision, um, you know, Joanne and I are leading on this, but as it moves forward, someone will need to oversee it and make sure that it stays running efficiently. But again, we hope to do it you know, less expensively and more efficiently than some of the current models um, and keep it running. I, this has to be sustainable. This, I don't want this to be a flash in the pan, something that, oh boy, in 2012, wasn't that really great? that we had those services and in 2013 they're gone. One of the reasons we're doing this is because over time, some of these services did exist in Port Colborne, but over time they've disappeared, be it because the service provider uh, didn't have funding any, any longer, um, some of the services used to be provided by the Niagara Health System and with all their changes and the hospital improvement plan, some of those services have been withdrawn from our city. I want this to be sustainable uh, for the people of Port Colborne. Um, and the stakeholders know that and, and we want them to collaborate and align with us in a way that we will go on into the future with this. The timeline, uh, you as council have given us one year and we will definitely exceed your expectations. I think we're already making much better progress than we expected at this point. Um, but we hope that you know, the pilot project will be up and running in a year. We hope to see this continue on and going. A couple other pieces of this I want to I want to talk about is is not only will this improve the patient care for the citizens of Port Colborne and the patients of the doctors of Port Colborne, um, other wins is it will make Port Colborne once again attractive to uh, recruit and retain physicians. Uh, we've talked about sort of the physician satisfaction model, um, and then you know. Why is the medical school involved? Well, because they have to teach new physicians and teach young physicians. And they, McMaster's had a history of innovation. They want to teach their students in areas that are on the cutting edge of medicine, that are doing things in new and innovative ways. Uh, and we hope that by setting this up, students will not only want to come here to learn, but that they'll want to come here and practice when they're done. So this, this project, I think, is exciting on a lot of fronts. There's a lot of exciting wins to be had for the municipality, for the Lynn, for the medical school, uh, for the physicians in town, for the stakeholders, but most of all, to the people whom we serve, and that's the patients of Port Colborne, who desperately need uh, these services to improve their health care and their quality of life. And I thank you very much for your attention, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Dr. Remington. Well done. Very well stated. I, my first question is, do you have anything that, you being a doctor and everything, do you have anything that makes hair grow faster? <laughs> no? 
Um, I, my mother always said Jello. <laughs> I ate a lot of Jello, and I'm not going to take my shirt off and show you, but it's <laughs> just waiting for the '70s to come back in. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Members of Council, any questions or comments? Well, all i got to say is uh, thank you to all three of you. And, and I shouldn't just say the three of you, Joanne, uh, Carl, and Jeff, but, uh, but to the many people that have worked behind the scenes. I know Dr. Everson from the Lynn, as well as the local, uh, other local docs here in the city of Port Coburn have to be given a lot of credit. It's once again bringing the local doctors back uh, to work together within the community, uh, but not only here in Port Coburn, but throughout the entire region to integrate that communication to ensure that uh, not only are you gathering uh, together the information, but you're also dispersing that information so that everyone uh, at their fingertips can have use of that, especially when people are integrating from hospital to community, uh, which, as you said, is, 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 is best for them because of, uh, because of emotional stability and other, other factors uh, with, with respect to family. But I, but I think as well it also addresses uh, health care services through the allied health care professionals that, of course, these people are trying to tap into. As you said, Jeff, you know, at one time these services were once offered here in Port Coburn. And this is now a mechanism to bring those services back into Port Coburn un under a new model. And, uh, and with that, having it come to fruition uh, based, on, based on that new model uh, versus just simply being a dream uh, of which this municipality has had for, for many years. But, but I have to say this, you know, our appreciation has to go to yourself, Jeff, uh, Dr. Stobie and Joanne, and the other docs here in Port Coburn, because quite frankly, if it wasn't for you folks, just, this just wouldn't happen. I know, Joanne, we've been working on this, and Carl, for, for how long now? probably the better part of a year, yep. if not longer. And it, and it was really up to the local docs to really take this on as their initiative. And, 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 uh, and Jeff, of course, taking on a leadership role uh, is the reason why it's now in place. It's now working and clicking. So as you mentioned, Jeff, for, for, for it to be sustainable well into the future is going to very much depend on you folks. And, and we give our true appreciation to yourself personally, you. but as well the other docs that are involved in this process and will be involved in this process uh, as time goes on but as well the allied health professionals that this is going to depend on for it to work. So kudos to you folks. Great work. Thank and I look forward to working with you well into the future. Thank you. Members of Council, no further comments? Great. Thanks, guys. Joanne, thank you as well. Members of Council, we're now going to move on to our next presentation. And uh, our next presentation is going to be communicating to us from the City of Toronto. Uh, so we are going to take advantage, full advantage of technology this evening. Uh, we, we're going to call upon Mark Rogers. Uh, as many of you know, Mark has been with us for many years. Uh, Mark represents Borden Ladner Gervais, who is a legal firm out of Toronto. And uh, we're going to be discussing the sale of Port Coburn Hydro, Inc. and an application to the Ontario Energy Board with respect to that sale. Uh, Mark, we're going to get on the line here and uh, is going to make presentation to us uh, on that. Uh, as well as answer any questions that uh, that council may in fact have. So with that, I'm going to call a two-minute recess so we can get them online, and then uh, we'll take it from there. Members, if I can reconvene this, uh, this meeting, we have on the line uh, Mark Rogers from Board and Gervais, as well as Saba... Zade. Zade, there we go. I can't even read my own writing. Sorry, guys. Okay. Saba, uh, Saba Zade and Mark Rogers from Borden Lander, and once again, members of council, we're going to be discussing the sale of the Port Coburn Hydro and the application to the Ontario Energy Board. Mark, did you want to start us off? Yes, uh, thank you, Vance, and good evening, everyone. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. All right, so, so where we are tonight, this follows up from our previous meeting a couple of months back now, where we talked about the uh, what was going to happen to, to get our latest application before the board to wrap up this lease transaction. So what has happened over the last couple of months is that along with CNP, we've been working on the form of application to the Energy Board. And the Energy Board prescribes the, the form and the kind of information uh, that, that is needed. And we've gone back and forth on several iterations of the document, uh, which is substantially complete. There's a couple of uh, tweaks that I want to still change. but. There, there are really a couple of important messages I wanted to bring to you tonight uh, from that first meeting and from our back and forth with CNP over the past couple of months. And the first is that we've taken, we've now taken CNP through uh, the fact that when we apply to the board, 
we're, we're, we're going to ask that our distribution license keeps going, keeps becoming valid, notwithstanding that we're, we're selling the system. Explain to CMT that the reason we want to do this is the city of Port Colborne wants to keep its options open for other opportunities. And I, I told them about, you know, the, the change in, in, uh, in allowing street lighting, for example, to become part of a regulated business. We talked about potential generation opportunities. So initially, CMP was kind of uh, pushing back at that. But as of last week, we took them through it, and they've agreed that, OK, we can, we can ask for this in this case. They're not going to oppose us. So that's very good news. So part of the application will be now us requesting the OEB uh, that we want to, Port Colburn Hydro wants to keep its distribution license uh, and just to carry on. So that may generate some questions from the board, but again, our answer will be we want to just make sure our options are, are, are open. So that's one important uh, uh, concession that's come out of our negotiations with CNP. The second thing is, and this is, um, this is you know, directly to Council's interest, is we wanted to get an understanding from CNP, a clear understanding, what was going to be the impact on distribution rates for Port Colburn ratepayers after this deal closes. And this was a little harder to ferret out exactly what CNP had in mind, but we ended up having a very good discussion with, with Bob and CNP last week. And CNP basically said that they don't expect, after this deal closes, any major increase in Port Colburn rates. They said that any of the kind of big investment they've, they've done or started to do over the term of the lease, and uh, they, they said it's, uh, clearly that they don't have any major capital expenditure uh, plans in the, in the immediate horizon, and that really they're in what's called sustainment capital load, which essentially means putting in money to take care of what's in place now. So I thought, you know, it, it, that was probably about as, as much comfort as you could reasonably get, but it was important because we had talked before about, you know, if they, if they harmonize rates with, with their other um, uh, utilities and other jurisdictions, what the impact of that would be, and at least from, from everything we heard, it sounds like it's going to be uh, very manageable. So we, we certainly don't see any clouds on the horizon that would give you concern on the political front that all of a sudden rates are going to jump up with this thing closes. They're, they're telling us the opposite. So that was also very important. Uh, there are a few other, as I say, changes that I want to do to the current MADS application. I think you can approve it in its form tonight, and over the next few days we'll you know, make the final tweaks and then file it with the um, Energy Board probably in the next week or so. And then what happens after that is that the Energy Board will issue a uh, procedural order, and that will really spell out the dates and the process for this hearing. So it will give, we'll have to take an ad out in the paper. Uh, interveners will be able to uh, say they want to participate. Uh, I suspect this is going to be a written hearing. And uh, I don't suspect we'll get this procedural order until maybe November, but that's basically the process here on in. And that really, that really is a, a summary, uh, Your Worship, of where we're at. Thank you, Mark. Members of Council, are there any questions or comments? Councillor Bodner? Mr. Mayor, I think it's a wide, wise decision uh, to keep uh, our options open, as Mark has just said. Um, I don't have to tell anybody around this table that it's increasingly difficult to uh, run a city on taxes alone, and uh, we have been pretty innovative in our way of uh, looking at other business ventures. And I think this is just another example of, uh, of an opportunity that, uh, that may open up for us that, uh, you know, that we don't want to lose. So keeping our options open is a good idea. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Kenny. Thank you, Your Worship. Just for those who may not be aware, uh, Mark, could you just explain what this application actually is when you say the MAD application? A lot of people listening tonight might, might not know what that is. I wondered if you could just uh, kind of explain it in maybe layman's terms to those listening. Thank you. Yeah, Mark, just to let you know, as you're aware, you are on, on your, here during a council meeting. Yes. Uh, but as well, you're on Coach Co. and the media is here. Uh, so just to give some more explanation, as Councillor Kenny has requested, on what the MAD application, in fact, is, what it stands for, et cetera. 
Yeah, well, the, the MAT application is what the Energy Board prescribes anytime there's a, a, a merger, an acquisition, a divestiture of utility assets. So in this case, we needed two sets of approval to conclude the whole transaction with CNP. Now, just, just to stop you there, yeah. for you folks that are watching on Kojiko, as well as for the, uh, for the information for both the gallery and the media, as you know, back in 2000, I believe one or two, uh, Mark, 2001? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the city entered into a 10-year agreement with Canadian Niagara Power for the lease of Pork Open Hydro. After the 10-year uh, uh, ten year period was over, Canadian Niagara Power then had the option to purchase outright Pork Open Hydro. Uh, the 10 years is over. Canadian Niagara Power is now exercising that right. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, so so um, th there was two sets there's two sets of approvals that were needed for this deal. As you say, the first one was 10 years ago when we uh, got the approval from the Energy Board to enter into this lease. And um, at that time, we, we, along with CNP, made a joint proposal. Uh, CNP, obviously, very experienced in this sector with a good record. Uh, and so the Board approved that lease. However, what we're doing this time at the end of the lease, we had built in a option for, uh, that was at CNP's discretion whether they were going to buy the assets now that the lease is over. And they've, and they've told us that they're going to do this. So the second approval is the actual transfer of the assets from us to CNP. Because up until this time, CNP had only leased the assets, but ownership was always with Port Colburn Hydro. So that's what this, this, this next application that we're going forward with to the OEB is to seek the board's approval uh, to, 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 to sell the assets to CNP. And that concludes the lease arrangement after we get approval from the OEB. Thank you, Mark. Councillor Kenny, that's fine. Are there any further questions or comments? Just, just a comment, and, and uh, I'll state this. Back in 2001, uh, having the privilege to, to negotiate that deal, uh, back then with the, with the Council of the Day um, was something that brought the city not only a financial benefit but also the benefit of working with an experienced bunch that was quite frankly able to accelerate close to 10 years of capital work uh, in a short period of time because of the wherewithal, financial wherewithal that they had in comparison to the small commission that we had here in the city of Port Colborne. Uh, second point is, is that we also had the ability back then to do something that we're not, that's not so much different than what we're doing now. And that is to, in fact, put in place more equity uh, on behalf of Pork Open Hydro. Uh, yes, Pork Open Hydro existed as a hydro company, but we were also able to start a second company called Pork Open Fiber. And that uh, not only uh, became a, a name, but also became a, a shared venture with three other municipalities that created new equity that's bringing into the city close to 400,000? Going to be. Going to be able to, well, it has about 150,000 a year but is expected within the next two years to bring close to four to $500,000 of dividend payments into the city per year. Uh, Councillor Bodner is referring to future opportunities that will be open for us under this agreement, and that is uh, future opportunities to create more equity uh, besides the fiber, uh, but also with street lighting, uh, power generation, and, and I'll say other, because there's other opportunities that, that exist uh, in the new day of, of producing energy. Uh, so what this is doing, what we're entertaining tonight, what Mr. Rogers has presented to us is a resolution to a shareholder, a resolution of a shareholder, to proceed uh, with the application uh, to, to then close the deal with Canadian Niagara Power that will bring us a, an additional $6.9 million in terms of what the initial deal called for, uh, but as well preserving our right to proceed not only with other equity options such as uh, fiber optics, but also uh, those options that, uh, with respect to uh, street lighting opportunities and, and, once again, opportunities to create further generation, whether it be through wind power, solar power, uh, gas power, or any other opportunity that that, that Park Open Hydro Corporation, which will still exist, can uh, make occur. And therefore, again, to the taxpayers, bring further revenue generation to the taxpayers uh, over and above uh, the sale itself. Mr. Hollis, you want to add anything to that? No, Your Worship, that's complete. Mr. Rogers, did you want to add anything to that? Well, just, uh, Mayor Valerie, just a couple of final points. It, it should be noted that 
You know, t 10 years ago when we entered into this lease, it was the first in Ontario's history. It had never been done before. And so, you know, the city of Port Colborne certainly blazed a new trail with this transaction. And I think, you know, in 2020 hindsight, it really has worked to both parties' advantage, which is what you want in a deal. Uh, Port Colborne Hydro uh, was the recipient of some pretty significant capital expenditures by CNT, so it's rebuilding the infrastructure of the system. And at the same time, uh, you've received uh, considerable uh, lease payments uh, over the 10-year period, and as you just mentioned, a buyout at the end. So I, I think it has been a good deal for both parties, and uh, it's hard to believe it's been 10 years, but this is the final step really to conclude it. Time does fly, doesn't it, Mark? Sure does. Well, I, I, I have to say as well, and members of council will recognize this, but members of the public may not. Um, and Mark, you can help me out here with the final number, but uh, and Peter possibly as well. But we also were on the hook um, for a transfer tax. And, and, and Peter, what, what was the total amount of that transfer tax? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it was 33% um, of the total transaction. And when the uh, Right now, we're, we're paying payments in lieu of taxes over the last 10 years based on income. And uh, on the, it'll be about $1.2 million on the $6.9 million uh, for the, uh, the uh, option purchase. So as members of council does rec do recognize, uh, although we're getting equity from the, sh the sale, or the lease, now the sale, we're getting dividends from, from uh, Port Coburn Fiber, uh, as well as future opportunities as it relates to generation and street lighting. Um, you will recognize that as well. I'm trying to go after the province, the Minister of Finance, to try and get back our transfer tax dollars that both have been expended as well as that are going to be expended within this transaction. Uh, I'll say to you that uh, it's been two years' worth of work at the Minister's office, and it's been a roller coaster, to say the very least. Uh, everything from uh, battling staff with respect to their opinion, uh, receiving from the Minister himself, uh, uh, Good news, I'll leave it at that, only to find out six months later that uh, that news was shifted based on the urging of his own staff. Um, that battle is not over, and my intent is to continue to work with the future government uh, and the future Minister of Finance and hopefully try to regain those dollars back to do exactly what the dollars are doing right now, and that's to, in fact, continue to rebuild and or build our local infrastructure not having to go back to the property taxpayer, but to take a tax that, by the way, isn't no net benefit to them in terms of cash. It's, it's basically just deferring uh, a tax that would otherwise, um, again, be paid to them, and we can put that back into the ground here in the city of Port Golden. So uh, we're still working on that. I'll let you know that. But again, another source of revenue that the city of Port Colburn may be able to tap into. Peter, did you want to add anything to that? That's good. Martha, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, but I, I, the only thing I would say, uh, Your Worship, is, 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 again, when you look at the economics of the deal, and again, just to recall that 10 years ago when we did this, uh, the lease came out of a competitive process. So we had multiple bidders putting multiple proposals forward, and the lease was the best one. So in, in the context is that uh, even with all those different scenarios, uh, the city benefited from the most lucrative proposal that we did receive through that competitive process. And I think, as you mentioned, Mark, that one of the, the biggest benefits besides the cash that we received is also the work that was done in terms of the capital. Um, you know, being a commissioner, I recall back in 1997 to 1999 when I first got as, on as mayor, uh, as a commissioner myself, and I remember Commissioner Tuck and Commissioner Weaver at the time, really had a hard time trying to proceed with the capital work that was needed to be done within the utility because we were such a small utility with only 9,000 customers. Um, when you get on board with a big player like Canadian Niagara Power, which is owned by Fortis Ontario, which is owned by Fortis worldwide, um, they had the ability, once again, to accelerate close to 10 to 20 years of projects within one or two years. I, I know, I know the, the, the connection under the canal alone was a huge, huge problem for the city of Port Colburn because of the power uh, between both sides of the canal, and they had the ability to do that within one year. Um, and that was something that we struggled with for three to four years when I was on the commission. So a benefit there, but as well a benefit because of their overall uh, overall uh, knowledge when it comes to the industry itself. And I can say 10 years after uh, being uh, a partner with Canada Niagara Power that it was 100%, 100% a good move by this community. 
uh, and I often talk to other mayors from other communities who have customer bases within 9,000 up to 50,000 that are even themselves recognizing that they just simply can't do it alone anymore. And they try to make those partnerships with the bigger utilities, such as with Fortis and the bigger ones uh, that are out there throughout the country. So it was, it's, uh, it was a great partnership then to establish, and it's a great partnership now to continue. So and we're looking forward to that. But as well, as Councillor Bodner mentioned, looking forward to the op other opportunities that we're going to have within the community to, to offer further uh, equity and, and revenue options for the community. So well done to the past as well as present council and staff. Mark, anything else you want to add? No, I think the only thing now, Your Worship, is that you should have um, a uh, resolution before you as the, uh, as the sole shareholder of the utility. And um, we need that council resolution approved because, again, that's one of the one of the documentation that's needed by the Energy Board to make sure that you as the shareholder have approved it. Okay, thanks, Mark. So, members of council, I'm going to need leave of council because this is not introduced on our agenda tonight. We're going to introduce it now based on this delegation. If I can ask for leave, Councillor Doucette, Councillor Demery, are there any questions or comments to leave of council? With none, your pleasure. All those in favor? Opposed? That would be carried. Members of council, you will have in front of you a resolution of the shareholder, the Corporation of the City, the Corporation of the City of Port Colborne, resolution of shareholder. You'll have it in front of you. I'm sure you've read it. And with that, I'll be asking for a motion to move this resolution. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Steele, Councillor Kenny. Are there any questions or comments to this resolution? Is there any clarification needed? Members of staff, Peter, especially you, you're fine. Bob, you're fine. I am, Mr. Mayor, yes. With no questions or comments, members of council, I'll ask for your indulgence on this motion. All those in favor? Opposed? That would be carried unanimously. Mark, thank you. Hey, thank you, sir, and thank well, you, Council. Well done, and Saba, thank you as well. Thank you very much. Have Take a great night. You too. Bye-bye. 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 Does that phone call just save us about three grand? <laughs> <laughs> Bring them down here from Toronto? <laughs> uh, well, thank you, members of Council, and then once again, well done. We're looking forward to continuing on with this partnership, especially uh, the partnership that we've established with Canadian Niagara Power. I'll now ask for, there's no other delegations. This is good, we're moving along quite well. I'm not going to get into my marriage report. If I can ask, is Stephen here, Stephen Thompson? Oh, he left. Coffee break. Coffee break? I do have a marriage report that is uh, pretty much dedicated to the Economic Development Office uh, Corporation, as well as now our in-house uh, department. As members of council do recognize that the city of Port Coburn has most, recent, was most recently received an unprecedented number of awards from the International Economic Development Council, the IEDC, earning five excellence in economic development awards. Port Coburn is garnering significant notice both in Canada and around the world. The awards were presented last week at a ceremony held in Charlotte, North Carolina as part of the IEDC annual conference. Award honors were presented to the City of Port Coburn for the following areas. The Port Coburn Economic Development News received the first place award in the newsletter newspaper category. The electronic newsletter was introduced in 2010 and is distributed quarterly to readers throughout Niagara and around the world, keep the, keeping them informed on business news and investment opportunities here in the City of Port Coburn. Award judges stated that Port Coburn's newsletter was the best submission out of all population categories, all population categories, and praised its use of electronic and paper distribution. The second, the 2010 Economic Development Tourism and Marketing Department Annual Report received the first place award in the annual brochure category. The Port Coburn Economic Development 2010 Annual Activity Report promotes and reports on departmental goals, initiatives, and achievements. It also serves as a comprehensive report to members of City Council and the overall community, documenting the efforts, activities, and accomplishments of the Economic Development Department, offering an in-depth account of the de Development Department, offering an, as well an in-depth account of the activities of our staff and other departments that our staff continually works with. It also produced a high visual impact format that captures the success of Port Coburn 
and of course not only the city of Port Colborne, but the surrounding area here in the southern part of the region. Judges stated that the annual report is subtle, refined, and sophisticated, especially with the size of the city of Port Colborne. Once again, emphasizing that Port Colborne continues to be the little city that can. The third, the Carbohydrate Valley Tour, received the first place award in the special events category. This day-long biofood industry tour, held in May of 2011, introduced over 30 business, business decision makers, trade commissioners, and government officials from around the world to two Carbohydrate Valley manufacturers, those both here in the city of Port Colborne, being Young Winslower Canada Incorporated and Casco. And these included stops in four municipalities across the region, but highlighted the city of Port Colborne. This event was designed to leverage the unique opportunity of two biofood conferences being held in the city of Toronto on the same week, which collectively attracted 15,000 domestic and international industry delegates. The tour was well received by all who attended, remarking on how original and informative it was here in the city of Port Colborne. The uncharted, unexpected advertising campaign received honorable mention in the, in the paid advertising category. Since its creation in 2010, uncharted, unexpected branding has been introduced to the marketplace via a multidisciplined approach that includes a strategic mix of print, outdoor, indoor, electronic, video, and online media. The Niagara South Coast Uncharted Unexpected initi Initiatives brings effective and consistent messaging to municipal tourism and investment marketing efforts. It reinforces that the Niagara South Coast brand could be a critical component in raising awareness of the city of Port Colborne, South Niagara, and of course our surrounding areas as being Niagara's South Coast. This as a business and tourism destination while also reinforcing the city's geographic location and leveraging the overall Niagara brand. The Wind Energy Manufacturing Cluster folder received honorable mention in a special purpose brochure category. The Wind Energy Manufacturing Kit was developed once again in 2010 as a high quality, high impact, comprehensive sales tool for one-on-one -on -one meetings with green energy manufacturing companies during several strategic conferences worldwide and conventions. An objective of the Wind Energy Manufacturing Marketing Initiative is to increase the level of wind energy equipment manufacturing in a city by promoting Port Colborne as a leading manufacturing center for the wind energy industry. It also serves as a strong role in businesses retention and expansion with a focus on promoting the existing supply chain that would otherwise supply this sector, this cluster, but as well strengthening them to continue to supply additional sectors that they're currently involved in. The folder includes a dedicated wind energy manufacturing promotional brochure, a comprehensive site profile, aerial and transportation maps, and informative fact sheets. This initiative is a joint effort between the City of Port Colborne, the Niagara Economic Development Corporation, Rankin Construction, and Allied Marine Industrial here in the city of Port Colborne. The material highlights a unique manufacturing opportunity in Port Colborne for the renewable energy sector using the city's multimodal transportation network and existing manufacturing supply chain as competitive advantages as well as the abundant amount of serviced industrial land that we currently have alongside the Welland Canal and of course short and mainline rail. As well, our Manager of Economic Development, Mr. Stephen Thompson, has been recognized as the first Canadian to receive an Economic Development Professional Award for the, from the International Economic Development <coughs> Council, something to be extremely proud of. This award acknowledges outstanding leaders who are advancing economic development in their communities, surrounding areas, regions, counties, based on significant career achievements and contributing to their not only their organization locally, but partner organizations regionally, community and the advancement of economic development as a profession. I can say, and Steve, I know Stephen was here, but I think he had to slip out for something, probably a meeting, if I know Stephen. Uh, I have to say on behalf of council, our congratulations goes out to Mr. Thompson for such a great and uh, worthwhile 
uh, achievement. I know Stephen, and I'm sure you guys do, I know Bob does, uh, we have an economic development officer that goes well beyond the call of duty. Um, we had to talk him into taking six weeks of vacation by the end of this year. We had to order him to take six weeks of vacation by the end of the year. So, you know, we got a fellow that's, that's certainly dedicated and, and by all means um, is well deserving of this award and the attention as well as the, uh, the recognition um, it was, is well overdue and well deserved. So once again, on behalf of council, I can, I can say to Stephen, congratulations, uh, job well done. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's accumulated over previous years. Thanks, Bob. If I can just conclude by saying that, um, that these prestigious awards signify that, that your community, the city of Port Coburn, uh, specifically Team Port Coburn, and when I say Team Port Coburn, I mean staff, I mean you as council, the folks sitting across the way here, and even you folks in the gallery and, and throughout the community. Um, it's, it's a testament that in terms of what we do together to really put Port Coburn as such a small community on the map, although a small community, uh, I think it goes without saying that we act and proceed with different initiatives that only uh, a big community can, and we do it with, with great success because of that team, Port Coburn uh, spirit. And, and we're at the forefront of economic development and tourism marketing bec for those very reasons. The awards attract submissions from around the world, folks. Around the world, these awards attract submissions from, and are judged by a panel of experts engaged in economic development and marketing from around the world. It is an honor to have the city's marketing efforts be recognized worldwide. Each and every individual from within the city's team, as well as those from the overall community, you folks on the gallery, you folks watching on Kojiko, you folks that generously, by the way, contribute to positively shape our community are to be commended. The entire team is to be commended. We have undertaken aggressive marketing strategies here in the city of Port Coburn, and I am pleased to see the results of these efforts. These international marketing awards confirm the strengths of the marketing materials produced by the city and the initiatives that we involve ourselves in on a yearly basis. The feedback from the judging panel validates our efforts and helps the city of Port Coburn elevate future initiatives. Ladies and gentlemen, your team is working for you, yes, but how important it is for you as community <coughs> members, volunteers, businesses, sponsors, to be a part of that. Otherwise, we just simply wouldn't accomplish what we're setting out to accomplish. The worldwide judges recognize that. I'm just hoping you do, and that we can, we can continue as a team to further this community along as we have in the past. Members of council, any questions or comments? With none? Where did Stephen go? He just disappeared. He's meeting a client right now. Go figure. <laughs> Email him and say congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Uh, members of council will now move on to the regional council Mr. report. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Councilor Butter. Mr. Mayor, I thought you were just talking on this report here, but seeing as how this is your time to shine, uh, no reflection on your hairdo. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, there was a few councilors that were taking jabs at you when you uh, agreed to uh, shave your head. Okay, maybe it was only me, but you know. Um, but uh, certainly, um, I think the last time I said I could speak for all the council, I guess maybe all the councilors weren't in agreement. But this time, I think maybe I can when I, you know, when I can say that. Uh, thank you very much for doing that. That was a you know pretty gutsy thing, and uh, you know I just wonder whether you could mention how much money you were able to raise uh, on behalf of that, and congratulations from council on doing that. Thank you, Councilor Button. I truly appreciate that. Uh, we were able to raise uh, just over $2,500 uh, for this, but, uh, but more importantly, in total, uh, we, were, we were able to raise over 11,000, uh, 11, and, and that credit has to go to Nancy Selvich. Nancy really, once again, worked extremely hard uh, to rally up all the folks to, uh, to come down to the park before, during, and after, and really take part in raising those funds for cancer research. So, so to all those folks, uh, well, first of all, to Nancy herself, thank you. Uh, from all of us throughout the community, throughout the region, uh, and throughout the nation for, for having that ability to do that and contribute to the overall cancer research, but as well bring recognition to uh, the need to raise those funds. 
but also to bring uh, recognition to the support that's needed for the folks that are fighting and battling cancer. I think uh, to stand shoulder to shoulder with those folks is very important, and I think uh, as well that's what it brings to this whole cause. Uh, but also to you, Council, uh, to, the, to the public, to the community that all took part, uh, not only during that day, but during the many other events that happened in support of Terry Fox Day. Uh, thank you. It was a job well done, and uh, hopefully at the end of the day this year the entire nation uh, rallies together to raise the much-needed funds for cancer research and as well the support uh, to all those folks, neighbors, family, and friends that are fighting this terrible disease. So thank you, Councillor Bodner, for bringing that up. I truly appreciate it. Councillor Steele. Councillor Bodner couldn't have brought in a better segue, Your Worship, with regards to what's going to happen next. I need to use the podium so if we can have His Worship up at the podium for a little bit of a presentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you have to do? <laughs> No, 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 no. But uh, as Councillor Bonner brought forward the uh, ribbing that uh, the mayor uh, took uh, from all of us at the last meeting, um, Your Worship, I had the privilege on behalf of the Port Colborne Golden Puck uh, to get the honor of winning the chance to shave your head. I know the paper mentioned that I was a councillor. Yes, I was, but I was there on behalf of Golden Puck. Just to give you a little uh, uh, insight on that, um, the guys from Golden Puck, we have one member going through a battle of cancer right now. So in hearing that Vance was doing this, uh, at that time he was uh, uh, slightly under $1,000, and uh, one of our members called up and said, how much does he need? And they said $200 to get him over the $1,000. Uh, we were on the golf course that day, and, and the emails and the texts were going to every member, and we voted online and unanimously to, to support uh, Vance's effort to raise money for Terry Fox and cancer. So not only did that bring Vance over the $1,000 mark, I think it spurred on a lot of people to get him up over the 2000 I walked into Vance's office on the Monday morning after I was able to shave his head, and I said, Nancy, where is he at? He was slightly under 2000 or yeah, he was slightly under 2000 I said, Nancy, what do you need? She told me I pulled up my money, and I made sure he got over the $2,000 mark, and then today I hear he got over $2,500. So for those that donated to Vance's... Uh, uh, initiative on this thank you uh, especially on behalf of Golden Puck uh, we know what we've uh, gone through with our member uh, in raising funds for his himself uh, in his battle so however Vance did state that during that day that once his head was shaved and we did try to get his eyebrows done but um, <laughs> uh, he, he said no um, he kept telling me how cold he was. I mean, even though it was a warm day, but he said, you know, my, you know, you're really cold now that you don't have hair. You don't really realize that until you're bald. Uh, a couple guys up there, uh, they know, or you shave your head. So on behalf of uh, staff and members of council, your worship, may we present you with this hat. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Steele. <laughs> what would that be? Actually, well, I don't know. Really, <laughs> That's great. Thank you. And uh, as well, Councillor Steele, if you can go back and tell uh, or, or express to Golden Puck my appreciation. Uh, thank you very much. I know uh, Mr. Cote was, was a part of that. So if you can thank him as well, that's, uh, that's wonderful. It's very kind of you guys. Members of Council, we'll now move on to our regional Councillor's report. Councillor Barrick. Yes. <laughs> They, this is going to be disappointing after that, but it's kind of hoping you'd wear it for the rest of the meeting, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be brief. I know there's a, a great contingency here from Port Cares this evening that are awaiting an item, and I, I certainly don't want to get in the way of that. But I did want to mention this evening that uh, the region did release their uh, very first quarterly financial update, uh, which I think is, is tremendous in terms of transparency, openness, and accountability. Um, it's the first one of many, so I'd like to thank the regional chair's office as well as uh, Commissioner Hutchings for putting this together. Uh, it is ver very detailed uh, statement of operations for all the departments, and it is available online, uh, and hard copies are also available at uh, niagararegion.ca, and just search under a quarterly update. Um, I did want to highlight a couple of items that I, th 
I thought were important since we were running into um, budget meetings. We're currently in the budget process for the region. We had, a, I think, a good meeting last Thursday. It was about uh, six or seven hours or so, uh, but some healthy discussion there. Uh, looking at the consolidated statement of operations for the region, uh, the annual budget is approximately $750 million, and that goes towards items such as uh, policing, housing, roads, water, wastewater, social assistance, provincial offens uh, offenses authority, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, the revenue side, as, as many know, uh, the bulk of that comes from property tax, but also from Ontario Canada grants, fees and service charges. So far this year, the region is forecasting a year-end funding surplus of $8.3 million. The majority of this surplus is generated by increased investment income, increased Niagara recycling revenues, and increased Provincial Offenses Authority revenue. A couple major 2011 deliverables so far this year that are noted in, in the update. Um, as many know already, commencing an intermunicipal transit pilot program, establishing a new investment and property assessment taxation reform committee to improve investment performance and consider new tax policy, created an economic development task force to review and recommend a new model for economic development in Niagara, and uh, one of my favorites, delivered a tax decrease to Niagara region taxpayers. So again, it's very detailed and I'd encourage uh, those that are interested to take a look online or, or pick up a hard copy. The other item uh, that we discussed at our, at our budget meeting at the region was our capital uh, budget, in particular uh, public works, but all, all of the departments we discussed. In particular, the 10-year capital funding gap. Uh, the plan that the region has is a $1.55 billion capital works plan spread over 10 years. Uh, currently, as for financing those plans, uh, we're $185 million short. We discussed the potential of tacking out a 1% infrastructure levy uh, to help close that gap, uh, but we will be seeing more options, including um, further phasing uh, of the scope and making changes, perhaps reduction of projects, looking at development charges by law and uh, federal provincial opportunities. So again, we're just beginning our, our discussions, really setting direction for the budget, both operations as well as capital. And uh, that's just the update uh, for this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barrick. Members of Council, are there any questions or comments to the Regional Councillor? Councillor Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Three to the Regional Councillor. Um, you glossed over real quick the $8.3 million forecast surplus. Um, any idea what the region has in mind for the uh, surplus? Councillor. Thank you, uh, Councillor Elliott. That was uh, one of my questions at the region. <laughs> uh, actually, they, they do have some of that uh, surplus already designated. I guess we'll have to wait till the year end to see if it's still there. I'm, I'm uh, hoping it will be. Again, it's only half. This is the, as of the end of June. But what they have in here is a, a couple of options, potential uses for the forecasted levy surplus, funding the $2.8 million funding gap in the 2012 budget, <laughs> Additional contributions to unfunded employee future benefit reserves, additional contributions to the self-insurance reserve, or additional contributions to the Provincial Offenses Authority Facility Renewal Reserve. Those are the options that are suggested by staff. However, it will ultimately be a council decision. We haven't had that discussion yet, and as I say, it'll likely be a year-end when we confirm exactly how much that surplus will be. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Members of Council, any further questions or comments? Thank you, David. That was uh, very in-depth, and I have to say that uh, I agree with uh, Councillor Barrick in terms of his statements, uh, especially in the media of late, with respect to the, uh, the need to look at exactly where those dollars go. Uh, I think for the most part, uh, and I'm sure David shares this thought, you, know, it, it, you always want the dollars to go back to the taxpayer, but uh, we also have to be careful and cognizant of the fact of if we have, in fact, any unfunded liabilities that uh, it can also be looked at in terms of those dollars going back to. So our head's above water down there. We just got to keep it that way, and hopefully uh, we'll get them to uh, put it in the right spot as as, uh, as would, would otherwise be, I guess, our desire to see that where that money goes. So well stated, David. No further comments or questions of the Regional Council? With that, thank you. Uh, thank you, David. Members of Council, Councilor's items, new business.
Councilor Elliott, Councilor Danch, Councilor Bodner. I'll go first. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have one item to bring up tonight. Um, this coming weekend, or not this coming weekend, the long weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, the BIA, downtown BIA, is uh, scheduling an event called uh, Fall Harvest. Uh, we have a couple of events planned, and we're a little late getting started, so I am here tonight um, to ask council, do I have to ask for leave? Are we going to do it as a motion, or? What do you want to ask council for? I'm over here. What do you want to um, ask council for? Permission to have Except our event. Accept the motion? Yeah. Um, we had a discussion this morning with staff, so maybe I should defer to staff to make okay. comment on what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to have a couple of events in uh, King George Park, and uh, one event that uh, we hope to have take place on uh, the streets. So um, we have a little discussion on uh, how we're going to uh, get it through council because we're a little late in coming. So okay. So what what actually does it need, Ashley? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my understanding is that the downtown BIA is looking to have a uh, fall um, uh, Thanksgiving type event in King George Park, um, something for the children to attend with some um, photo opportunities, I think, with uh, hay bales and things like that. Um, no staking of, of tents into the ground or anything. So um, in discussion with the uh, Director of Corporate Services, Community Corporate Services, um, we decided that the uh, since the board is under the insurance policy of the city, they were didn't require any uh, certificate of insurance, and they would simply need to get a park permit from um, community services. And in addition, I believe that the BIA is also uh, proposing a um, on-street horse and buggy ride um, in some of the downtown area. Okay, thank you, Ashley. And, and a date for this, Dave, is when? October the eighth. Yeah, Saturday, the long weekend. And we don't we don't have a. Council meeting before then? No. Okay, so Next, yeah. okay, so let's ask for leave of council. Uh, moved by Councillor Bodner, seconded by Councillor Demeray. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? That will be carried. You're asking for two uh, requests. One is for a park permit, and the second is for a street. Um, the park, the park permit. We just have to get permission. Yeah. I think we were just looking for, thank you, Mr. Mayor, we were looking for just council support of the two events. Um, okay. The park permit doesn't require council approval. Okay. Thank you, Ashley. You want to put that forward, David? Okay. Thanks. Um, uh, I'll get a second there first. Councillor Steele. Dave, it's all yours. I guess what we're looking for is, is council support on the activities that we're going to have. Um, it was just something that was brought forward at the last BIA meeting, which was last week, the week before. So it's in between last council meeting and this council meeting, it does not give us enough time to get anything prepared before the next council meeting because that happens after the, uh, the weekend. So I'm just asking for, uh, for council support on the activities. It uh, should generate a good buzz around uh, the downtown area. Uh, there should be a lot of people home for uh, Thanksgiving with their families. So we're just asking for uh, council support for that. Thank you, Councillor Elliott. Members of council, any questions or comments to that motion? With none, all those in favor? Opposed? That would be carried. Thank you, Councillor Elliott. Well done. Councillor Danch. Just want to throw a little congratulations to all our Main Street merchants for their two-day uh, food drive that we did for Port Cares. Uh, we generated approximately 900 pounds of food and uh, $100 in cash donations. So congratulations to my fellow Main Street merchants. Uh, whether it will be a yearly event or not, I don't know. but. Uh, there actually was a real horse on Main Street, and a great job with all those involved. Thank you. Thank you, Frank, and uh, well done to yourself as well as the Main Street merchants. Great job. 900 pounds of food is nothing to turn a head away from, so great job to all you guys. Councillor Bodner. Mayor, two items uh, this evening. Um, I talked with uh, Mr. Sanas earlier in the day about uh, uh, something that happened out in my area, Cedar Bay, Pinecrest Road area, very severe dog attack. And I know um, that we can't talk a lot about it because it's probably under investigation and everything like that, but I'd just like the residents to know, and Peter, if you could confirm this, that the uh, Well and Humane Society, they did attend and that they, uh, they are looking into it. And I know as word gets out to different neighbors, people are going to be wondering. So uh, I just want to let them know that we're on it and Things are going along, and I didn't know whether you had a chance to talk to the Humane Society. I know you're planning to if you have it. Mr. Sinez? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have no further information from our discussion this afternoon, and uh, 
as I do if, uh, as you say, it's under uh, investigation in the Wild Humane Society, and uh, they will be doing what they have to do in this uh, particular case. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead. One more item. Uh, we met our new town crier tonight, which was which was pretty nice. And I just think uh, that maybe we owe a big uh, thank you to our former town crier, Derek Miller, who uh, for years did a, a very great job and more often than not involved his family in it. And uh, I'd just like to, uh, certainly on behalf of myself, uh, thank uh, Mr. Miller for doing a, a fabulous job as our town crier. And I understand he has moved on to town crier in Waynefleet, am I right or not? in Wainfleet, so I wish him a lot of luck and thanks for the years he spent here. Thank you, Councillor Bodner. Councillor Demery. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Mr. Hansen. Um, Ron, on Field and Avenue, directly across from the Friends Over 55 building, there is a very large puddle during rainstorms. I found this out, unfortunately, at about 9.30 at night, um, didn't see it, hit it, and soaked some poor woman badly. <laughs> it was really embarrassing. But in any case, that's when, one, if you're, one, if you're watching, less, we're taking care of it. That's one less vote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's, it's <laughs> war three. <laughs> in any case, so uh, Mr. Hansen, possibly um, you could have someone look into it. It's directly across from the senior center. Um, if you're heading northbound, that side of the road, so it's the east side of the road. Um, very large uh, wow in the road collects a lot of water because it, it really moved my van so thank you thank you councillor further new business councillor Kenny thank you worship I have a, a couple of items uh, first uh, a couple months back um, council recall that um, I had a complaint uh, from one of the constituents that live out on town line road because Waynefleet had decided to change the name to the Port Coburn Waynefleet Townline Road. And she told me that you couldn't fit that on any application form. Um, so I'd like council to consider um, if they would um, a name change, either in conversation with Waynefleet or whatever. I'd, I'd like council to um, pull, I guess, the residents on that, on that road first, because I think they definitely need to have input. Um, she just simply wanted to change it to Town Line Road South, but certainly I think it's, uh, we could send a letter out to them and say that um, because of the EMS concerns um, that we would like to have a uh, name change to that road and whatever that is, um, let's give them some consideration. So I just like to ask town, uh, Council if they would consider uh, uh, a different name for that road or, or a shortening of that name, something. Thank you, Councillor Kenny. If I may um, help you out a bit here, in terms of, uh, first off, there's, there's two roads that we were looking at. So I'm assuming you're only talking about the one road and leave the other road separate? Correct. Okay. Secondly, uh, you're asking for an, a process to start. Uh, that would include input from the residents that live on the road? Yes. And then a name would be chosen with their input? Correct. Perfect. Okay. Uh, first off, if I can ask for leave members. Motion to, for leave of council to accept that motion. Councillor Elliott, Councillor Doucette. Questions or comments? All in favor? No question? Go ahead, Councillor Butter. Are you saying we're just going to rename one road? I, I, I'm not sure if the other road's in our jurisdiction, Your Worship, is it? Mr. Yes. Heil? Is it? Both Town Line Road north of Highway 3 and Town Line, Town Line Road south of Forks Road are, are joint roads. You have a responsibility for both of them. Okay. With, so, along with well, I mean, so you're looking at two separate names for both yeah, roads, correct? And involving the public from both roads, correct? If there's any, is there any public on the other road? On north? Yes, there are. There's there are. three houses. There's three houses. Okay. That's Good. Right. All right. Any further questions to leave of council? Leave of council. All in favor? Opposed? That will be carried. I have a motion moved. Did I have a seconder? Good job. Right in. Okay, so I got Councillor Kenny moving it. Do I have a seconder? <laughs> Who's the other war three? Councillor Danch, you want to second that? Okay. Questions? Councillor Demery. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was just going to suggest that if we're talking about two roads, possibly we let Wayne Fleet choose one and we choose the other? No? I, I, I'd look at, I'm, not, I, I'm asking the mover, but I, I would recommend that you actually involve Wayne Fleet in the process. 
involve Wayne Fleet and the residents on, on both sides of the road uh, to, to be a part of the process. Is that fine, Councillor? Okay. Really Councillor Danch, that's fine? To, yeah, okay. Further questions? Councillor Steele. Just further to uh, my fellow councillor, make sure that we stress both to the residents of Wayne Fleet that the, we shouldn't use town line only because there's so many town line roads around. And secondly, that each end will never get joined in the middle because of the Wayne Fleet bog, that we go with two separate names, not a town line road north and a town line road south type of scenario. So as you mentioned earlier with the emergency services, um, so there is no discrepancy, there's no confusion that they get to the right house at the right time when, when they get a call. So I would add, make sure that's added in there. Thank you, Councillor Steele. Further questions or comments to the recommendation? Councillor Steele or Councillor uh, Kenny, do you want any closing comments? No, you were, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. M members of Council, your pleasure to the motion. All those in favour? Opposed? That will be carried. Thank you and thank you, Councillor Kenny. Very much appreciated. Okay. You got other items? <laughs> I have two more, just two more. Uh, <laughs> Earlier, we uh, in a meeting that we had, a public meeting we had, in regards to um, amendments to the Port Colborne Downtown Central Business District Community Improvement Plan, uh, Mr. Aquilina uh, was kind enough to, to mention to us that this was not in our Main Street uh, CIP um, in regards to the um, grants available, and uh, I'd certainly like that council to consider those same things implemented in our CIP. If we're doing it for one, I would like us to see that uh, that done for the other. And so again, <laughs> I would ask to ask uh, for uh, that. Council, consider that. Thank you, Councillor Kenny. I will once again ask Council for leave to introduce that recommendation. Mover and seconder, Councillor Steele, Councillor Butters. Questions or comments? Other than Councillor Butters, go ahead. Through you to Mr. Aguilino, what uh, financial implications is that to the city? Mr. Aquilina. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On the advertising, that would be the financial incentive at this moment. When that program's in place, it's going to be another program that the city will have to fund. Uh, the monies are only so many per year, so come budget time, you know, this is something that council's going to have to look into. And not only the fact that we have this CIP, Payne Street, Brownfields, East, employment CIP. There's, there's a lot of CIPs going on, so it's really how much money does council want to put into the CIP programs. Mm -hmm. And just, just a question from that, and it's up to council how much they want to put in any, any given year? Mr. Mayor, this, this year there was $50,000 put in, and it was on the levy. Mm -hmm. So come budget year 2012, mm -hmm. it'll be up to council to determine how much money they want to put into the CIP programs. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Councilor? So just to clarify then, if, if how soon could this pass, Mr. Aguilina? Through you to Mr. Mayor. Through you, Mr. M Mr. Mayor to Councilor Bonner. Once we go back to make an amendment to the Main Street CIP, this, the downtown CIP will be on Council's agenda for October 20th. There's a 20-day appeal period. So it's a matter of opening up the amendment process again, having the statutory meeting, it could be you know, two, three months before that actually is in place for the Main Street. Mr. Sinez? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, for clarification, um, the funds that were put for the, uh, the um, uh, community improvement plans was not on the levy, but it was one-time funds that was, uh, that was issued and put into reserve over the two years of the $50,000. So it's not a direct, it wasn't a direct impact on the levy. So it still will be a, a choice of council as to how much dollars are put into the program. Okay, so I, just, just before I go any further, because we're starting to get into the actual motion now, if I can just get on the floor the, the motion to, for leave to, to accept the motion. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? That would be carried. We do have a recommendation moved by Councillor Kenny. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Danch. Questions or comments? I'm going to go by the Councillor Bodner. Go ahead. So just so I'm clear, so if someone was to apply as soon as it was available, they wouldn't know whether the money was available or will it simply come out of the pot of money we have there now? Mr. Aquilina? Through Mr. Mayor to Councillor Bonner, it would come out of the pot we have right now. However, there's not many monies remaining. So it depends on what someone is applying for and how much money would be allocated to them for their particular 
development. Okay. Premature without knowing what they're proposing and how much monies would be given to them. It's on a basis of $10 per square foot. Okay. Further questions or comments? With none, all those in favor? Opposed? That will be carried. Thank you. Now, Dan, that was for Main Street Gateway, established for downtown, and then we've got three outstanding, which is the waterfront, the B or the brownfield, and that's it. And then the and the employment, employment CIP as well. And that'll be and that'll be in partnership with the region. Correct, Mr. Mayor. Right. Great, thank you, Councillor Kenny. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this going with this through you, please, to uh, Mr. Hanson. Mr. Hanson, I had a lovely letter dropped off in my uh, mailbox uh, from a resident in the area of the Bartok subdivision asking for some type of speed control or something on the north end of Fielden. As you know, when you go into the Bartok subdivision, there's a little bit of a dip in the road, and the resident is concerned because there are a lot of children there, and there is actually uh, no sidewalk on the east side in that section and so they're concerned about uh, children walking to, to school so they're just asking for um, some type of speed control either a, a reduction in the speed or something to get people to slow down their assign children playing or children walking something to try to get people's attention that they should be slowing down in that area um, and so uh, I told her I would bring that forward at this meeting and uh, my final uh, one your worship is just to let anyone, everyone know that I am retiring from the NHS as of Friday, uh, September 30th. Uh, my last official day actually is, uh, is Halloween. I have a month's vacation that they have to pay me for, uh, which is really, really nice. But uh, my actual day of work is uh, the, the 30th. And it came down to, uh, they started, uh, the NHS offered me uh, that I would be working half time, three to 11 and half time days and I told them how much that would interfere with my work as a city councillor, and they pretty well basically told me, said, too bad, so sad. So I uh, uh, contacted the pension people and uh, found out it's a pretty sweet pension I'm going to get. Not bad, not bad, I can live on it. And so um, I gave them my uh, retirement notice. So just to uh, let you know that I'll have lots more time to uh, so spend here in, in, in investigating. <laughs> <laughs> no more comments. <laughs> we'll give you an office. <laughs> Thank you, B. And uh, congratulations. Congratulations. And now that you have more time in your hands, that's really good to know. That's really good to know. <laughs> uh, would you be interested in the CEO's job? <laughs> Great job, B. That's uh, good for you. Good for you. Well deserved, I'm sure. Members, members of council, is there any new business further? Members of staff, are there any updates or anything that you wanted to give us? Ron, did you want to comment at all on B's uh, request on Field and Avenue? I know she's asked that on four other occasions so we, and, and uh, hasn't gotten it yet, so she's trying for a fifth. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there was another uh, piece of correspondence on, on the agenda tonight. Uh, for a speed reduction as well and we're getting a lot of these requests obviously in the last couple of years I, I would hate to suggest uh, a, a, another study but I know Councillor Kenny and I have discussed this on many occasions and probably a need for a speed study citywide at least through the urban area uh, it would really I think emphasize some of these areas that there's many areas that used to have uh, elementary schools in them that had 40 kilometer zones those zones are all in place. The schools are long gone. Many of these areas exist, and it's probably an onerous type thing on the, on the residents in that area to have these slow speeds everywhere. So it all points towards a sort of a speed study uh, citywide across the urban area. And, uh, maybe it's something yeah. that, we, that I can bring up at budget time, maybe put a, a number to it, and if council wanted to consider that, it'd be a, a good tool for the councillors to, to have uh, when they get this type of request, so we could refer to the study and say, well, here's what's recommended for this particular area and then implement it. Fine. That's something, for, I think, Mr. Mayor, for budget consideration. Okay, thank you. That's fine, Councillor Kenny. Okay, anything further? Members of staff? 
I got one thing that I wanted to bring up. I was actually called today by the uh, Brooklyn Pirates Junior B Hockey Team that uh, this Friday they're having a benefit game for uh, for a young fellow, Walter Lumsden, who had a tragic accident uh, up north uh, recently. And uh, the players on the Junior B Hockey Team felt it necessary to uh, ask their owner and ask the folks of Port Colburn if they'd be kind enough on Friday to dedicate the Pirates uh, Wallen Junior Canadians game, which of course we're expecting a lot of people for because it's a huge rivalry. And yes, Wallen, you are going down once again. But uh, to dedicate, did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, to benefit that game for, uh, for Walter uh, in terms of uh, having proceeds uh, from him donated to his family to help offset some of the costs that gonna, they're going to incur for the, for, uh, for the next little while, I'm sure. So, um, in speaking with uh, the team, uh, one of the things that was asked of us was if we would be interested in actually waiving the cost of the ice time for that particular evening for the hockey team so that uh, not only do they raise funds from all you folks gonna be, who are going to be going out to watch uh, the Pirates, uh, I'm sure, once again, uh, show the Canadians how to play some good hockey, uh, but also to, uh, to raise some funds for this family. And with that, we can participate in raising those funds by waiving the cost of the ice time. So, uh, members of council, I talked to staff about it today. I never had a, talk, I never had a chance to talk to Gary. Uh, I totally ignored Peter because I knew what his answer was going to be. <laughs> but Bob and I talked uh, and chatted a bit about it. We thought it would be necessary to, uh, to bring it to council's attention and therefore ask council's uh, blessing on this particular issue. So I am going to ask council tonight uh, to consider this. And, and with that, uh, if it was your pleasure to bring a motion forward to, in fact, uh, do just that to waive the ice time for the uh, benefit of hockey game this Friday between the Pirates and uh, and uh, the Welland Junior Canadians. Councillor Desat, did you want to move? If if, if Council's uh, obliged to do that, I'll ask for leave of Council once again. Um, Councillor Desat, Councillor Kenny, all in favor? Opposed? That would be carried. Councillor Desat, you want to put that motion forward? Go ahead. I'd like to put the motion on the floor that we waive the fee for the ice and that that amount of money is placed into the fund for this individual. Great. Thank you. Do I have a seconder to that, please? Councillor Kenny, are there any questions or comments to that? Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? That would be carried. And uh, for you folks, uh, it would be a, a real uh, a pleasure to see that, that arena filled on, uh, on Friday evening. Uh, once again, a uh, a big rivalry between the Pork Open Pirates and the Welland Junior Canadians. As you'll recall, uh, Welland had to fly our flag for a considerable amount of time last year after we came back to sweep them four straight, being down three games. And uh, that game is starting uh, uh, 8 p.m. Westside Arena uh, here in Port Colborne. And once again, the Pirates and the Junior Canadians and all dollars raised will benefit uh, the family of the Lumsden family for, uh, for Walter and, and to, uh, to help uh, uh, as they incur some costs for his recovery. So with that, uh, thank you, members of council. I do appreciate your generosity. And to you folks out in the public, uh, we look forward to seeing you on Friday night. Members of council, I'll be looking for a motion to adopt the minutes of the 22nd meeting regular of Committee of the Whole, uh, dated September 12, 2011. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Danch, Councillor Elliott. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That will be carried. We'll now move on to items requiring a separate discussion. We'll start off with number one, Councillor Bodner. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Whereas Port Cares is a community organization that provides leadership, support, and resources to enhance the quality of life for individuals in Port Coburn and the surrounding area. Whereas Port Cares relies in part on funding and private donations to meet its financial needs. And whereas the Port Cares capital campaign, Reach Out and Changing Lives, was established to raise funds to support an expansion and renovation to the Port Cares Reach Out Center, whereas Port Cares received a total of 670000 through federal and provincial infrastructure stimulus funding for the campaign, whereas the campaign is to raise matching funds of 335000 by the end of October 2011, whereas the City of Port Coburn previously supported the campaign through the waiving of building permits and development charges fees totaling approximately $28,000.
whereas the Council of the Corporation of the City of Port Coburn is desirous of further supporting the Port Cares Reach Out and Changing Lives campaign. Now, therefore, the Council of the Corporation of the City of Port Coburn resolves as follows. That Council supports the Port Cares Reach Out and Changing Lives campaign through the approval of a donation in the amount of $25,000. That the donation be financed through Port Coburn Fiber, Fiber Inc. by dividends received through the Niagara Regional Broadband Network and that the donation shall not impact the tax levy nor jeopardize any current city projects. Thank you, Councillor Bodner. I have a seconder to that, please. Councillor Butters, are there any questions or comments? Councillor Bodner. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and I, I thank Councillor Butters for bringing this forward uh, as a notice of motion last week. I guess what, uh, what I'm looking for this evening is to vet this through council because $25,000 isn't a small amount of money. And I think there may be some questions, uh, certainly I have some, and I would expect to get some phone calls uh, asking some questions. So I wonder if we get some answers tonight, it may you know, help people realize uh, why we may be doing this. Um, so I guess one of my questions certainly is that uh, This is proposed to come from Port Coburn Fiber. Um, and I know that Port Coburn Fiber owes hydro money. So I just want to be assured that Port Coburn Fiber actually does have this amount of money and that, um, you know, it says that it won't impact any projects in the future. Um, and it won't uh, jeopardize any tax levy. So I just think we should get this out in the open and uh, I don't know whether Mr. Sines can give us some idea what we're up against. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Sines. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, I guess what I can provide Council is a little bit of uh, background as to um, where we are, uh, both uh, in the granting uh, business and also where pork over fiber sits. Um, I guess to start is uh, the council did authorize originally the granting authority to go to Port Coburn Hydro. Port Coburn Hydro has over the years uh, with the, uh, the lease money uh, been providing approximately $40,000 a year in, in, in granting um, in grants um, and no different than in 2011. 2011 grants have, have already been uh, um, uh, allocated. And in 2012, 2012 from, from, from the Port Coburn Hydro perspective, will be the last year of uh, grants that we will be provided from Port Coburn Hydro as the lease um, uh, will come to an end in, in 2012. Uh, in 2012, uh, the board has um, um, agreed that they were going to do two processes, one in the spring, uh, spring issue of $20,000 approximately, and one in the fall of 2012 for $20,000. So that's where the, 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 the granting is at, at the moment. Um, as you know, Council has, has also approved that uh, hydro funds, net of any expenditures, uh, including grants, is allocated to the community center. So it just gives a little background of where we are on the hydro side. Port Coburn Fiber and it ties in with Port Coburn Hydro in the fact that um, when Port Coburn Fiber uh, invested in uh, NRBN, Niagara Regional Broadband, uh, the funding for that was through a loan from Port Coburn Hydro to Port Coburn Fiber. The amount that's outstanding right now is about $529,000 uh, that Port Coburn Fiber owes Port Coburn Hydro. The motion that uh, the Board of Port Coburn Fiber has on their books right now is that any of the dividends that are being received from NRBN would go back to pay um, the hydro funds uh, that were that were loaned, and um, in uh, due to cash flow, basically. The as of the end of this year, right now, Port Coburn Fiber has in the bank approximately one hundred fifty thousand dollars. There is a, another dividend from NRBN. Um, coming in uh, the fall of approximately about another $150,000. So 
So that will provide $300,000 in the bank for Port Coburn Fiber at the end of the year. Pay that back to Port Coburn Hydro, there's still a $229,000 amount owing to Port Coburn Hydro for the cash flow of Hydro. The, in 2012, the um, NRBN dividends uh, that we're, we're expecting, it's not guaranteed because it, obviously it's a year, over a year away, is approximately about $250,000, which would then pay off the $229,000 balance of the loan. That'll leave about $20,000 if the $250,000 comes through. That'll leave about $20,000 in the NR, or in the Port Comer Fiber Bank account at the end of 2012. To, at some point, um, there would be uh, brought back to this council as to whether or not there will be a shift from the granting authority from Port Coburn Hydro, since it's be ended, to Port Coburn Fiber, because Port Coburn Fiber is going to be the entity where dividends are, are, uh, are coming in uh, to the city, uh, and to Port Coburn Fiber in order to, to grant any, uh, conti continue any of the grant programs. So with all that said, um, I guess the options that Council has with regard to this motion is one, is uh, if council approves the payment of a grant, um, whether it be 25,000 or another amount, um, that it does have the authority to, um, to request hydro or fiber uh, to issue that grant. If they do, then there's a couple options as to how that may be granted out. One is, uh, and, and I'll, one is through hydro, because that is the granting authority right now uh, under uh, council's jurisdiction. Two things could happen. The grant amount could come from the existing grant money that's allocated on an annual basis, which would be $40,000 coming in 2012. What that would do is reduce the $40,000 down to $15,000 for the 2012 applications. So that's one option. The second option, obviously, is to continue with the $40,000 grant and you pay, or you, you um, the, the grant for this program would be on top of the $40,000. Now, in doing so, that would reduce the funds that's available for the, for the community center. The next option that you would have is Port Coburn Fiber, and Port Coburn Fiber does have, at this point, $150,000 in the bank. Uh, the the $25,000, or whatever the amount may be, could come from the existing cash funds that Port Coburn Fiber has. And essentially what that would do is delay the payback of the hydro funds um, to Port Coburn Hydro uh, to probably closer to the end of 2012. The only difficulty uh, with that is then uh, the funds that I mentioned before, that you'd have about $20,000 at the end of 2012, that those funds would not be available for any future projects or any, any uh, grants for 2013. Um, it, since 2013 it would be the anticipated time frame that the granting program would shift over from Port Coburn Hydro to Port Coburn Fiber. Uh, essentially those are the sort of the options flowing through any, any of the grants through Port Coburn Hydro or Port Coburn Fiber and essentially it's you know it's up to council to debate the issue as to one um, as to um, whether or not the the grant would be approved and allowed. Second is how it would be funded and uh, the options are, are before you as to how it could be funded if council so chooses. Thank you, Mr. Sinez. Councilor Butter? I'll wait with other questions so other councilors have a chance to speak. Thank you. I have Councilor Doucette. Clarification of that. Councilor Steele. Thank you. Just, just to clarify what Peter said only because I do sit on, on hydro. At our last board meeting, the Port Coburn Hydro and Port Coburn Fiber passed resolutions to the fact that we wanted Port Coburn Hydro to continue as your granting body until 2012. After 2012, our uh, motion came forward to revert it to fiber so that granting can continue within the city of Port Coburn. The reason why we want that is we want the debts paid off. We don't want to leave Port Coburn Fiber short of any cash flow at any time and that way it was seamless and it would come through council um, th from Peter 
so that everything was seamless and it would go through and uh, there was no worrying about whether there's enough money in which account, this account, that account, in case something had to be paid on behalf of Port Coburn Fiber. We didn't want to leave it short. So we felt that with the projections coming forward through um, NRBN is that that debt would be paid off by 2012 and it would be seamless in the 2013. There'd be enough money within Fiber to continue the $40,000 commitment that we have uh, that we passed on to Hydro at that time and we would have enough cash flow to do any other type of projects within Fiber. Um, as the Mayor mentioned earlier, you know, there could be things that come forward to help us gain even more dollars for the community. So that's why uh, what Peter said, just to clarify that Hydro has already looked at this and looked at the financials and we wanted to do as seamless as possible. So there's a scenario you can do this, um, but not necessarily the way this is worded. Thank you, Councillor Steele. I end up, if you don't mind, Councillor Doucette, Councillor Butters seconded the motion. I'm going to give her the opportunity to speak first. Uh, Councillor Butters, did you want to speak? Uh, yes, sir. And welcome back to you. Um, one of the reasons that I brought forward this motion was certainly the, is, is timing. There's a window of opportunity in terms of the, of the campaign for this, uh, the Reach Out campaign is um, that window of opportunity to leverage funding is only till the end of October. This, this council, as, and previous ones, as far as that goes, we've always kind of taken that attitude of like, here we have a dollar, where, where, where can we find two more? And we've been extremely successful, as this council and the ones before, to leverage funding. We have a dollar, we find two more to go with it, and, and it multiplies up. For poor cares, this means that the initial, I uh, totally acknowledge the waiving of those development charges is, is a generous thing to do. If we can see our way clear to make this, bring this up to $50,000, that leverages that much more money. We go from a, um, really to, to $150,000 coming back to Port Coburn. That's not small potatoes in my book. So I, that's why I brought this motion forward. My other, um, I want to clarify that what I put in here was that it, it is not to jeopardize any current projects. So um, current projects, the ones that are on the books, which includes the Health and Wellness Center, is not to jeopardize in any way. That's why I really didn't, I want, didn't want, I want to stay as far away from the actual hydro funds, concentrate on the dividend check, because the reality is this council has the authority to determine how much, how quickly we pay back the loan to essentially ourselves. And that's, and that's it in a nutshell. We have that authority. So if we want to say that we're going to support this um, donation and we're going to keep in the, for the grants, as, as Councillor Steele mentioned, the 40000 we can still do that. But we will pay back the loan a little bit, maybe into the next year of dividends. That was my intent was certainly not to, to mess up the tax levy, certainly not to jeopardize current projects, but to be able to help poor CARES leverage, leverage a really substantial amount of money that if there was ever a time to do this, Mr. Mayor and my fellow councillors, now is the time because that window will close and, and the money will not, you know, that extra money will not come here in that way. So. That was, that was my purpose. I, I can't even tell you how, the degree which I believe in, in the things that Poor Cares does. And, and they do it for an entire community. It isn't just for the east side. It isn't just for here or for there. It is an entire community um, helping organization. Uh, when I saw, um, I'm going to go back a little bit to um, Every Kid in Our Community Counts Barbecue. And Councillor Demery was there. Councillor Doucette was there. You were there, Mr. Mayor. Um, and, and who I saw there were representation from Poor Cares, from Bridges, Vicki Moreland, Community Living, our own Joanne Ferricholi, like this wonderful effort in that park. And the park was full. And you, and you saw that. You were like probably the most popular guy there that day. It was an incredible community coming together. And when I see who Poor Cares partners with and the agencies that they um, are bring to this table and bring to our community, that's no small thing. That is no small thing. 
So that's why I'm asking for this kind of support. I think that there is a way to do this. I'm open to, to uh, you know, whatever manipulations have to happen to make this happen. You know, I'm not rigid in the fact that it has to be done this way, but I would like to see this done, and um, I hope that the rest of Council can support that. We have um, a wonderful group of people from Poor Cares, which includes some of the people from the board, some staff, supporters of Poor Cares. They come here tonight because they're, they, are so in, they are so vested in what happens here. This is our community. If we can't see our way clear to do this, we fall short of the mark in a big way, and that's how I feel about it, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Councillor Butters. Councillor Doucette. <clears throat> thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. All I can do is say ditto, because she said it all pretty well. I think what everyone has to understand here is when we say that Port Coburn Fiber owes money to Port Coburn Hydro, what they're doing is they're taking it out of the left hand and they're putting it into the right hand. We're just paying ourselves off. And this would, this would allow us to bring so much more money into the community and into that organization that we can delay that somewhat. And unless someone can tell me otherwise, I think it, was, it is probably one of the best ways. And we did it for the community center, for the health and wellness center. We did it for a lot of other projects. It's... A 33 cent dollar is essentially what they're asking for. And they're asking us to help them get that 33 cent dollar. That's what they're helping, that's what they're asking us to do. And in, in return, we get a one million dollar project that is going on and is almost finished, or per, I'd say pretty close to finished, if not finished. And that's important as well. We have to remember that this is going, this is adding a building that this city needed and it is going to give services to everyone in this city. Not only one side, not only the other side, service to everyone in the city. How can we deny this? Thank you, Councillor Doucette. I have Councillor Demeray, then Kenny, and we go to Elliot and Steele. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I would really like to hear from Linda Reinhardt at this point, and uh, possibly the council councillors may have some questions of her. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to keep rolling down the line here, okay. and then we'll go to that. I have uh, Councillor Kenny. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just uh, through you to Peter. Peter, um, I've got a couple of different figures, I guess, because I understand. I thought that it was in May 2010 um, that fiber, um, in order to improve the, the fiber company that we own, they asked Hydro for a loan of $400,000. You said five. 27, but I thought it was 400,000 with a promise of payback by 2012. So they, in 2010, they paid us 150,000. Um, in the end of this year, at the end of this year, we're supposed to be getting $150,000 from them. And then um, in 2012, $100,000 will pay off what they owe us, but we're expecting a little bit more. <laughs> than $100,000 from how well our fiber company is doing. Is that, I don't know where that 529 came from, so I need a clarification on that first. Mr. Sinez. Through you, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Kenny. The, um, the sequence of events for the um, investment in NRBN um, was initially $375,000. Um, in 2004. In uh, 2004. Yeah. Uh, between 2003 and 2004. The dividend payments coming back from NRBN started in 2006. We received $100,000. In that year, that dividend, $80,000 of that dividend was actually paid up through to the city. Um, so it wasn't paid back to the hydro to pay the $375,000 loan. Uh, in 2008 and 2009, we received $137,000 $37,500 in each of those years. Those three amounts is the $375,000. So it basically our investment was paid back mm -hmm. um, through, through the dividends. The, in 2010, $150,000 in dividends was, was paid to the city. Um, when we, in, in 2010, there was a, another $400,000 investment in NRBN. 
that four hundred thousand um, dollars, the motion from the board was that we pay up to four hundred thousand dollars through the hydro funds. Uh, in essence, there was cash because of the previous dividends. There was actually cash in the bank for um, Port Coburn Fiber, so we didn't require to borrow the full four hundred thousand dollars from uh, Port Coburn Hydro. So it was the, that difference that um, the three seventy-five up to five hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars. So it wasn't the full amount that we had to borrow from from Hydro because we had the the, uh, the funds from previous dividends that. Uh, was received in the bank, and therefore, Port Coburn Fiber was able to pay some of the um, investment through their own uh, through their own funds. Um, so essentially, that's how we got to the 529,000. It's less than the 775,000 overall because of uh, the cash that we did have from previous dividends. Thank you, Mr. Sinez. Councilor. Thank you. I have a couple questions of uh, Mrs. Reinhardt as well, but um, so. As you mentioned earlier, the granting of funds to community groups, this council gave that off to the Hydro Board. Is that not correct? Mr. Sinez? That authority off to the Hydro Board. That, that is correct. Okay. So my, I was really in a, I guess a demise because I was thinking if this one group is asking for money and we only have $40,000, I thought to myself, like, how can I, with any good conscience, say I can give them $25,000 of the $40,000 that we have? And that was my in thoughts during our hydro board meeting that we held on Wednesday. Then we got this report, and this report is not even suggesting that the money come from the hydro board. The report that we have in front of us, or the recommendation that we have in front of us, is saying that $25,000 should come from the um, fiber. Earlier this year, we gave Port Cares $28,000 by waiving the fees. That $28,000 turned into $56,000 because they get dollar for dollar back, so they got $56,000. So now I look at this and say now they're asking for twenty five, which their original ask, I believe, was 50000 and we said we can't give you 50, but we'll give you the 28. Um, so I'm still at a, in a dilemma here. I, I, I really need to hear from Mrs. Reinhardt. I need to hear because normally you pay your debt back first. No matter which way you look at it, it's kind of a shell game, right, Peter? You, you have money here and you have money there, but the, really the money is all ours. We're just putting it in different spots. So for me, normally I would say we better wait to 2012 and then all our money is paid back to Hydro that was originally borrowed. And now we have money that we can give to groups like this. I spoke to Mrs. Reinhardt earlier and asked her, can we pledge that amount? And she said, yes, you certainly can pledge it. It doesn't mean you need it today. We could wait to our second dividend check in 2012 and pledge it for there. As long as we are pledging the amount, that's a guarantee to them. So it doesn't mean that this dividend check that we're getting at the end of this year, we have to take money from. We can pledge that money, and by pledging that money from our next dividend check in 2012, is a guarantee to them. And so I, I, do, I am going to wait until I hear from Mrs. Reiner, because I do have a, just a couple questions from her, as I'd like to know how far they are in their fundraising. They said that they were trying to reach this $335,000 mark. And I'd like to know how close they are to that mark. And then also um, a comment from her about what we talked to her about just before the meeting, and that's pledging that money instead of giving that right away. I'd like to hear from her about that. Um, but that's just kind of an idea of where I am. Um, and when I hear from her, I'll make my final decision. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilor. Councilor Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Peter. Um, does the debt repayment to uh, Hydro have to be completed by 2012? Does it impact the sale of Hydro? I mean, if we're $25,000 out, if we take the 25000 out of the next um, dividend payment, is there a problem with not having the loan totally paid off by 2012? Through you, Mr. Mayor. There's no problem with it, it's up to council as to how you want to pay back the loan uh, to Hydro. The, um, the 
cash that the hydro would have paid back to them from Port Coburn Fiber is earmarked for the community center. So basically you're, you're looking at $25,000 short on your, your, your cash flow going to the community center if it's not paid back in, 20, in 2012. Um, and as I said before, the only other, the other th uh, thing is, is that's $25,000 that, that, um, that you wouldn't be using for any other purpose in the future. Thank you, Peter. Councilor? So for all intents and purposes, there's no real impact to the Health and Wellness Center. It's not gonna make it cease to be built. It's not gonna cost us anything in interest. It's just, we're gonna delay paying ourselves back by maybe a couple of months till a dividend payment comes out, maybe at 13. Um, I mean, I can't see it, the, the 25,000 being that much of an impact. I mean, Mr. Howe. Your Worship, um, in all of the budgeting that we're doing, the funding for the Health and Wellness Center is coming from Port Colburn Hydro. All of the funds that the hydro has, or has as a receivable as cash, has to be paid to the, to the city to pay for the city's portion of the Health and Wellness Center. By the end of the year, 2012, Hydro isn't going to have a lot of money except to cover its own banking charges, those kinds of things. It will have approximately $40,000 because Hydro is only receiving uh, lease payments for a part of the year, and it is the administration of that that has been used to pay funds. So there's about $40,000 that Hydro will have left over after Council's direction that all that money has paid through to the city to pay for the funding or the financing of the Health and Wellness Center. $25,000 means that there's going to have to be some interest cost and some carrying charges from somebody until that $25,000 can come back to Hydro, but it doesn't have any more source of revenue. So in fiber, while it has 150000 and we're looking at where its funding is, uh, by the end of 2012, to pay off all of the loans, it will have roughly, and this is hoping and expecting the NRBN is going to come through um, in 2012. 2013 is much rosier, but in 2012, <coughs> we expect that Fiber will have approximately $20,000 to use for grants in, in 2013. It's going to be short about $20,000. Given the circumstances today, Port Coburn Hydro, for grant purposes, will write checks for about $40,000 in 2012 for, uh, uh, despite the, the request for, for Port Cares. If it does the same thing in 2012 that in 2011, it's going to have three or $4,000, if that, in its bank account. And at the end of 2012, to go to 2013, Fiber will only have about 20000 You're going to be short about 20000 for grants in 2013. So there's a whole bunch of deferrals that happen here into 2013 and perhaps even on into 2014 for this one. If, for clarification, the current schedule is maintained. Yes. With fiber. With fiber. With fiber. Um, again, I, I think everybody knows where I stand. I spent three days in the parking lot to try to raise money for Port Cares. Um, I, I got to agree. I, I, we got to find a $25,000. To me, it, it's not a matter of do we have the money, it's, it's a matter of where do we get it from. We, we started Fiber to generate dividends for the city to use to distribute to worthy causes. I mean, this, this is a building, this is a service that helps out with kids on the east side, that helps out with people that need it. Um, their services are, are rendered throughout the city. Um, to me, the $25,000 ask, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a three for one. They put forth the, the ask early in the year to uh, the BCF fund to partner with them. They got funding from two levels of government to build a million dollar building. Um, I had the opportunity to go through it at a business after five, the Chamber of Commerce. The kitchen alone in the new building is as big as the old building was. Uh, the services that they offer, um, fantastic. For me, I guess I do it for the kids that they help service, uh, teach them how to cook, how they're going to grow and take those skills forward with them. It's, it's to me, it's something that we need to do. Um, we're going to take money that 
we're pulling out of a company that we've invested money in that's bringing dividends back to us. If we don't invest in our, our community, we don't invest in ourselves. I mean, that's something that we really have to look at, that it's, a, it's an investment in our community. And I think if people uh, in this chamber on TV, um, they see that, they see that we've considered it um, deeply, how hard it is on, on minimal dollars that, that we've got, but it definitely makes an impact on the city going forward. And I, for one, can support it just for the fact that it's an investment in Port Colborne, it's an investment in our future, and I think we've got the opportunity and we just have to take it. Thank you, Councillor Elliott. Councillor Steele? Thank you, Worship. Um, if it's Council's wish to, to proceed with this, I strongly urge you to allow your hydro and fiber boards with Peter's help to let our finances run their course and that this should come out of hydro. And if Councillor Kenny is right and this can be deferred till next year, I think it will give both fiber and hydro a better handle on where we're going. Those debts have to be repaid because we have commitments with them. We know through our, our uh, last meeting and, and when NRBA, the NRBN report came forward that the picture down the road, yes, does look rosy. However, as Peter cautioned, things do happen. However, we do have faith in that uh, corporation. But let Hydro do its job. Let it grant the money if that's the wishes of council, because it is the wishes of council. Because based on what Peter told us last week is that everything should flow properly, that in 2013, Fiber can take over, granting of the 40000 no problem. Because we've, we've changed the way we do our grant, and we've gone to a two-system uh, or a two-time a year. So in essence, we're going to do something this fall for, for the January winter time, and then we'll do another one in the spring for the following fall. So we'll take the 40 and divide it in half. The reasoning why Hydro did that was the fact that when you do only one, a lot of groups miss out because they're not really either running at that time, they find out there's no needs at that time, but if you can split it up two in half and go twice a year, you basically are trying not to forget somebody, or you can help as many as you can that things come up in the fall as opposed to uh, your original granting that they just didn't put money in because they, they weren't operating or their season hasn't started if it's a sports team or if it's a community group that didn't have a project very similar to this coming forward. So it'll allow us more flexibility on how we give out money. Still the same amount, um, but I think it'll be fairer to all groups within the community. But allow Hydro to do its job that it's been given through this council. Let Fiber pay its debts so that there's no gaps or laps or fees that we've got to pay and all of a sudden it does eat into those profits so that as much money can be given back to the community as possible. You know, we were blessed with hydro and the money. It's gone to so many projects in this community, whether it be through the granting process, uh, general infrastructure that we've paid for through hydro, and then our biggest uh, asset, which is our uh, new community center, which is being built. Um, some people think that all our money has gone to the community center. That's bull. This fund has funded tons of stuff since we started. Fiber came along through an FCM conference when uh, Councillor uh, of the day, Councillor Bruno and I met um, some fiber people we were invited to a, a small reception with them. That's really where fiber came from. That's just another bonus to the city. And through its board, we felt that when all debts are paid off, then they can continue what hydro started. So I would caution council on how you pay this. I would ask that if you are going to support this, that you support it through the hydro, let it run its course through that, and then everything along the way should fall into place. I just hate to see a couple years down the road where we go, Sorry, there's not enough cash flow. We have this to pay for, that to pay for. We don't have any granting money. I think Peter's put a good plan forward for us uh, on the board side of, of both hydro and fiber that we can continue this very seamle uh, seamlessly. So that's what I would pr uh, propose to you, that you, you let it go through hydro. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bodner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I pulled this for a good discussion. I think we've had a good discussion. Um, you know, I guess we've seen maybe it isn't quite as simple as what we think, and maybe um, we need to find a way to do it, but maybe in a slightly different way. Um, certainly, I don't think, well, I know that uh, you don't have to question anybody's support around this council table for Port Cares. Uh, this should never be the Health and Wellness Center versus Port Cares, doesn't get the money, 
uh, but what it also shouldn't be is that other community groups are, are jeopardized not getting the opportunity for $25,000, that that's the only chance they get, and we gave it to Port Cares. So we need to find a way, obviously, to work it out, and uh, you know, there's, there's certainly uh, a consensus, I think, that everybody wants to do it, it's just how we do it. So I just, uh, I'm happy for the, uh, the conversation, and uh, certainly I'd like to hear what uh, Linda Reinhardt has to say, uh, you know, and we may have some questions for her. Thank you, Councillor. Ms. Reinhardt, the point in the hour has come to you. <laughs> Linda, welcome, as always. Mayor Badaway, councillors and visitors. So much has been said, and I'd like to thank Councillor Butters for bringing the motion forward. I, I'm only going to make a few brief comments, but I did want to just say that uh, for the last year and a half, Port Cares has worked with the local interchurch ministerial, represented here tonight by Reverend Gord Abraham, to look for a way to bring a food distribution system to Port Colburn, a place where we would have storage and that we could provide food with dignity and that we could take us into the next foreseeable future in a way that we can focus on things like healthy eating, training, and bringing other services, and leveraging volunteer hours in our community. I looked at uh, the statistics and projected for the next year, we will have easily 10,000 volunteer hours will go into the Reach Out Food Center. It was the intent of Port Cares when we applied for the Inter, um, Infrastructure Stimulus Fund and started a capital project to leverage community dollars because it is what we can raise in the community will leverage from the federal and from the provincial. But it really isn't about our capital campaign. This is really about our community response to providing food and assisting families in our community who have lost jobs, about seeing that seniors eat and that they eat healthy, about teaching our young people through cooking circles. And we now have that location where we can access reclamation products from our grocery stores, where we can say tonight, like Councillor Danch did, that 900 pounds of food came in. We already know that, and those are the kind of statistics that the whole community can use when we're leveraging funds in the future. Farmers drop off corn and cucumbers. We're able to leverage so much more from our community and do this in such a way we already have a training program that is training people, um, 10 participants right now, in the upstairs of the new facility to go into the food service industry. And we will be doing that every 12 weeks. These are the kind of things that we want to do. These are the ways that we want to turn food into thinking about it in a healthy way and using it to train and bring skills to our community. There are agencies like ours in every community we have the good fortune, as I know you all know, to have employment services and skills training services amalgamated with our, our basic uh, services. And so we do have that opportunity to do this. And so I want to thank you for considering this. And I want to just say that we are leveraging dollars. Yes, we do have till the end of October to leverage this. and. We, um, we also know that uh, we are able to leverage so much more in the community. So I want to thank you for all your deliberations. We have, in answer to uh, Councillor Kenny's question, we have brought, um, uh, raised $250,000 of the 335. 
that we have, and we know that there are things like the regional mayor's golf tournament that uh, money is coming in uh, yet. And so uh, we will continue to bring all of our resources and work as hard as we can right up until the final day. So thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. Members of Council, are there any questions of Ms. Reinhardt? I have Councillor Doucette, Councillor Kenny. Well, Councillor Kenny, go ahead. Councillor Kenny, She's go ahead. No, I won't. How do you know that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, he read my notes on that far. No, actually, um, Linda, uh, you know that I'm a supporter of poor cares. You know, I mean, I was your auction chair for, for five years, and I think it's, it's great. However, how many clients um, do you get from outside of Port Colburn that take advantage of the great things that Port Cares offers? Like, do you have clients from outside of Port Colburn that come into Port Colburn? And uh, just for example, take participate in food classes or participate in those e other events that you have there? Our, our, most of our services are provided for Port Colburn and Waynefleet um, clients. We do have a couple of specific programs that are region-wide, such as our youth justice program, mm -hmm. but uh, for the most part, um, there are services such as ours and in other communities, um, people access services. Um, and so most of, almost all of our clients in the programs I think you're talking about at the Reach Out Food Center are clients from Port Colburn, Wayne Fleet area. Okay. Just, just, the only reason I ask that is because I do do um, Out of the Cold uh, myself uh, four times a year. Um, and. Uh, and I do have people who come buy a vehicle from Welland to take advantage of a hot meal in that hall right there. Um, I know they're not from Park Colburn, and, and yet they take advantage of that service that, you know, the inter-municipal church is offered. So I just wondered, I wondered about that. And uh, then again, you, you and I had talked earlier, and I had asked um, if we just pledge this for the following year, could we do that? So that so that you have the pledge, but not for not, not for when we get our dividend check, I guess, in 2012. I need to ask that question. Thanks. Yes. Um, to your first question, um, the um, people who are using our our food distribution center are issued member cards. And so they have identification and so on. And, uh, and certainly we will be able to provide um, a lot of statistics, a lot about the families, because we are using a database and we are weighing all the food that comes in and all the food that goes out. And we, and we have that uh, opportunity now through the things that we have at the new center. Um, so um, they would be people who would have the ID, they would have membership card, they would show their membership card just like you do when you go to Costco. Um, it's like we want to say. And so then uh, the next question um, regarding uh, if, you, if you pledged money in the future, we have some businesses who said they weren't able to provide or give us all the money in one year, but that they would pledge that and we will work around that. We will be... Um, it will, um, you know, we'll have other ways to, to make that up and, and uh, that will still alleviate the overall costs. And so if we made that pledge for 2012, you'll still be able to use that, leverage that money to leverage the other funds? We will, uh, the way that it would happen would be that there would be other money put in in that place that would then we would pay back because we are committed to doing this. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Councillor Bodner. Just so I heard that clearly, that $25,000, you would be able to leverage 25 from the province, 25 from the feds, if we just simply pledged it, because you would be able to take cash someplace else, stick it in for the time being, and then replace it with... Exactly. Money, something yes. like hydro and fiber. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further questions or comments? To Linda, right. To Linda? Nothing further to Linda? Linda, thank you. Appreciate your time this evening. Councillor Kenny. Th thank you. Um, I just finished talking to uh, Councillor Bunners because this was her notice of mo motion. 
And I uh, just asked her, should it be that 25 or should it be 22? We already given them 28, um, and the 22 brings it up to 50, and that was her original ask, was 50. So if we pledge this um, for next year, or the 2012, should it be tw the 22,000, which brings uh, our total commitment to Port Tears to 50,000, which they've turned into 150,000, think, yeah. right? 100. Perfect. Thank you. That's just, just for councils. Okay. Okay. Great. Councillor Demery. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, was just, I would just like to uh, put forward a friendly amendment to uh, Councillor Butter's uh, motion that we um, we consider that we approve uh, finan financing the twenty-two thousand um, dollars, and that we do it. Um, we allow the, the hydro to uh, decide how that money should be paid out. Okay, to, to the mover and seconder, we'll take that as a friendly amendment, 22 instead of 25. Okay, well, hold on a second. We got, we got Councillor Bodner actually moved the motion, and it was seconded by Councillor Butters. So I'll ask them if, if, if they mind if that's a friendly amendment, 22,000 versus 25,000. That's okay with you? That's fine. Okay. So we'll, we'll consider that friendly. Members, any further questions or comments? Councillor Bonner. In keeping with the, uh, certainly uh, the statement we made at the bottom of this that it won't jeopardize any current city projects, can I be assured that uh, the $40,000 uh, that Hydro puts up for distribution to community members, 20,000 spring, 20,000 fall, will remain in place? That this will not come out of that? Is that? Council, that's my intent, certainly. I just wondered, will that work staff-wise, and how are we going to do that? If, if I may, I, I'm going to sort of stick my nose into this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, and I think Councillor Bonnie, you bring up a great point. And I think Councillor Steele tried to try to emphasize that point and also give us a solution to that by using hydro funds versus versus uh, versus uh, fiber funds, because inevitably, whether you take it now or you take it in 2013, it's still going to net out whereby you're going to be affecting those, those very funds, correct? Uh, so because ultimately that's where the money is going to be coming from in 2013 is from fiber. Um, whereby if you go with Councillor Steele's thoughts with respect to taking out a hydro, all you're doing is deferring or referring payback to hydro. Eventually what, what's going to happen is the funds that you take out of hydro to pay for this $22,000 will inevitably have to be made up by, by fiber at a later date. So, so you're, you're basically just prolonging the payback uh, of, of hydro by taking the 22,000 out of hydro, which will be replenished by fiber. So, and, and I and I and I I agree with Councillor Bodner. You know, the last thing you want to do is take out $22,000 out of the, out of the $40,000 that would go otherwise to other groups. So, regardless of of the impact that you may make, um, or not only would you impact possibly on, on, the, uh, on the city's current projects, as well as the city's tax levy, but you can, members of council, you can in fact also impact on the ability to give to other groups, and, you, and we all don't want to do that, and I'm sure Port Cares doesn't want to do that either. So I, I like the idea from Councillor Steele to take, to take this out of uh, Hydro, uh, which should be part of this motion, by the way. Uh, that the $22,000 be taken out of hydro, and then of course that would be paid back by fiber as 13 and 14 goes on. So all you're basically doing is prolonging that payback. Um, and I would, I, would, I would ask that Council put that in a motion. I'm going to go to Councillor Steele and Councillor Desette. Councillor Steele. Thank you, Worship. Um, I, I will put that forward that it comes out of hydro. This can be done through hydro, still using the 40000 because, as Ms. Reinhardt says, they're actually going to pay this themselves with our promised to repay that. So we can actually pay it over time so that it's not affecting as much of the 40000 that goes out. And my reasoning for that is, is you've got a granting program that was taken out of the city council's hands and put to hydro so you didn't have to worry about people coming and, you know, it's the motherhood and apple pie type issues that we have to deal with around the table. It's a good cause, but let Hydro do its job. So if we can spread it out from now till 2013, because they've already said that they can pull it from a source 
to put it in, and then we can repay it back. You know, we have to do it over three payments. I have no problem with that. But I think we have to realize that, you know, because you're going to get every year a group coming forward. I mean, this is a great project, but now you're going to have other groups come forward and say, well, you did it for one, you did it for the other. But if it comes out of that 40000 annual and it's done over three payments, it doesn't, because uh, poor cares has received money through the hydro in the past, it's not tens or $20,000 like this, but, you know, they have in the past, so that would be part of it. So it may reduce your overall give to a number of groups, but that'll all catch up to each other as time goes on. When fiber finally takes it over, you'll be able to catch up to that. But if you spread it over the three payments, I just think that's fair to everybody. It's fair to this group. It's fair to the groups that, as Councillor Bodner said, aren't here today asking for a give. And it still takes it out of our hands and lets Hydro do the job of funding based on applications that are vetted at the board level to make sure everything is 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 okay, which we know this is because we've already had the big presentation when we gave our original 28000 so that's how I'm going to support this. So I would ask that you support it to go through the hydro that's used for the 40000 So everything else that Peter's put together on the financial statements of both those organizations, because through you, uh, Your Worship, to, to um, Councillor Doucette, it's not all the same money. These are different corporations and the way they're set up. And I must urge that you allow Peter to do his job and allow the money to flow properly and debts be paid properly so that we can continue to do what we do here and allow those uh, funds in the future to continue helping uh, groups within the city of Port Coburn. That's how I'm going to support this. If it's done through fiber, I will not support it because of fiber. It's not that I don't support this group. I just don't support on prolonging debt and then it could hurt us in the future. I think this can work through this on a three-pay plan. Obviously gives the Port Cares what they want. Um, and allows Hydro conti to continue to do what it does. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Steele. Councillor Doucette. I keep hearing that Fiber is giving us 150, 180. I thought I had heard Councillor Bruno at the time last fall saying he gave us $180,000 payment of some kind. How out of 150, we only get 40, I still haven't figured out. Because if they're giving us 150,000 every year, let's say, they are going to be finished paying everybody off by the end of 2012. That's hydro, right? So if we pledge it, that means the year after that, what do we do with the 150? We have, a, we have another hundred, these dividends are going to keep rolling in, and what, what you're telling me is that you're only going to have 40,000. And I'm sorry, I see another 150. And if you, if everyone is correct in their projections, 2013 looks rosy, that means it could be very well over 150. So now, what are we doing with the rest of the money? Mr. Heil? Uh, just a question. Uh, just to clarify, Your Worship, currently there's $530,000 owed by fiber to Hydro. Hydro's lease runs out and the assets are sold as of April the 15, 2012. All it's going to have in 2012 is approximately forty-two dollars or $43,000. Everything else goes to, through the process, to Health and Wellness Center. But it has about $43,000 left to its name in 2012. In fiber, it has currently 150000 in the bank. It's anticipated this year, uh, this month or next month, we'll get roughly another 150000 from NRB. So we're going to have 300. we are going to owe Hydro, about 220, we ex or 230, we anticipate or hope that the dividend is going to be somewhere around 250. So at the end of 2012, Hydro will have paid out its $40,000 for grants that it normally does. At the end of 2012, the loans will be paid. Fiber will have about $20,000 and that will be used for the grant program in 2013. 
we anticipate a dividend in September or October of 2013. It might be 150, it might be 250. Uh, we're not sure at this point, but that, that dividend won't be given to fiber until near the end of 2013. There's a gap in here. There's going to be a cash flow issue of trying to carry over $25,000 or 22000 That's the only thing is right now we've got a gap. And we have to try to finance it or fund it to suppliers or, or to complete this, this motion. And that the donation shall not impact the tax levy nor the je jeopardize any current city projects. I believe that... that or any community groups. Or, 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 any, or any community groups. We can add that as well. I believe that captures what your statements, Councillor. And I believe that ca captures the essence of Councillor Bodner's statements, as well as Councillor Doucette, Councillor Kenny, Councillor <laughs> Destemere, Councillor <laughs> Elliott, and Councillor Butters. So I think that captures everyone's comments here in that motion. Councillor Doucette, you had a comment? No. I'll leave it for now. Okay, thank you. I, now I'm going to go to the mover and seconder. Okay, is that fine? That's fine. Seconder, that's fine. Madam Clerk, did you get that? I did. Did you? Perfect. <laughs> Is there any more questions or comments, members of council? Go ahead, Councillor Butters. Only to thank um, Mrs. Greg and Mr. Sinez for their help. Great. Thank you. Councillor Kenny, you had a comment? You're just waiting for that hand to go up, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> members of council, your pleasure to the motion. All those in favor? Opposed? That would be carried. Thank you. Congratulations, folks. Linda, well done. Well done. Members of Council will now move on to item 11. Councillor Kenny. Thank you, Your Worship. That the Department of the Chief Administrative Officers Report Number 2011 15, Subject Volunteer Coordinating Committee Proposal be approved recommending that a committee of council be established consisting of one or two members of council and one member of staff. The committee's role will be to develop and recommend policy to council, provide for recruitment, training, placement, retention, and appropriate recognition. Thank you, Councillor Kenny. There was a second to that, please. Councillor Danch. Councillor Kenny, go ahead. Your Worship, Your Worship, I just pulled uh, it for uh, Council to consider one of the councillors uh, um, agreeing to be a member of this committee. Thank you. Mr. Ohio. Your Worship, I had the opportunity to speak with Councillor Demery, um, who has the dedication and the time, and I believe uh, um, if Council is agreeable that Councillor Demery would take that position as one member of council, and if there's a need, I would think once we look at it, since this is one or two members, if another person is necessary, then maybe Council Demery can come back to council with a suggestion about a second person. Unless thank you. Tonight. Thank you. And, and this, this, this is a result of, a, of a, one of those water cooler discussions that Bob and I had, uh, what was that, Bob, about three weeks ago, four weeks ago? And we, every once in a while we meet in the back yeah, of the Serving Crossing. And uh, we talked about this and, and, and thought it would be beneficial for us to really make the volunteer committee a committee of council. Uh, you know, the volunteers have really taken a life of their own on in, in the city of Fort Coburn, uh, so much so that we have actually other, other communities wanting to tap into our volunteer base and we tell them hands off. But, uh, but at the same time, you know, Joanne's been, did such a great job. Gina's done such a great job. Gina Murdoch, Joanne Ferricholi. Um, but they're so tied up in their respective roles and disciplines and files that they're holding within the community that they're sort of up to their foreheads and work. Uh, Angie uh, had said that she has some time and some desire to take on a role on behalf of council as a committee of council, and I'll let her speak to that. Um, but I think it may be a, a positive direction to take. Angie, do you want to speak to that? I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, yes, I, I would very much like to take on this challenge, and, and uh, I've got some good ideas, and I do have the time, so that would work out well. And in discussing it with Councillor Butters, she indicated that she would very much like to work on this as well. So um, she also has the time and some good ideas, so um, possibly we could uh, work that through tonight. Great. So we have two, uh, 
two people. Great. And Councillor Demery, Councillor Butters that are interested. Councillor Steele. Do you need an official amendment that we accept both Councillors Demery and Butters for this? Yeah, actually, if... if Should if, add that to the motion? Yeah, if you can, if you if can I read can. that out, please. Uh, that a committee of council be established consisting of councillors Demery and councillors Butters uh, and one member of staff. The committee's role will be to develop and recommend policy to council, provide for recruitment, training, placement, retention, appropriate recognition. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Heil, I'm sure that member of staff will be at your, at your discretion. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, someone in community services, uh, very close and dear and near to the volunteer program, yes. Great. Thank you, Mr. Howe. Members of Council, questions or comments? Councillor Bodner. Thank you. Sorry, I stopped out for a second. If this was answered, I apologize. But um, uh, reading in the report, um, I think I read that there will be no additional funding needed to hire anybody from staff. It, it'll simply be a slight shift in, am I right or not? I'd Mr. Like to know that. That's correct. Fine. Members of Council, any further questions or comments? Your pleasure. All those in favor? Opposed? That would be carried. Thank you, Councillor Demeray, and thank you, Councillor Butters. It's very kind of you to take on this role. <laughs> Members of Council, are there any notices of motion this evening? With none, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Councillor Demeray, Councillor Butters, questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That would be carried. We'll now move on to the Council portion of our agenda. Madam Clerk, are there any addendum items? None this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ashley. Members of Council, I need a motion to confirm the agenda, please. Councillor Bodner, Councillor Butters, questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That will be carried. <laughs> what are you doing, Yvonne? Voting from the gallery now or what? <laughs> Members of Council, disclosures of interest, please. You get so used to it, you just... <laughs> With none, we'll move on to the adoption of the minutes. We have two sets of minutes. I'll do them in block, if you don't mind. I'll be looking for a mover and seconder. Uh, the first set of minutes is a 35th, 31st meeting special of council, dated September 12, 2011. And the second set of minutes is the 32nd meeting regular of council, dated September 12, 2011. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Danch, Councillor Doucette, questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That will be carried. Members of council, are there any items requiring separate discussion? With none, moving uh, the adoption of the full agenda. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Butters, Councillor Demeray, questions or comments? All in favor? Opposed? That would be carried. I have two proclamations this evening, members, and I'll be looking for a mover and seconder. One is for National Child Day and a second for Fire Prevention Week. The first is that whereas National Child Day is a day to celebrate children and to demonstrate our respect for their rights and aspirations. And whereas National Child Day is celebrated throughout the world, commemorating the adoption of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of the Child in 1959 and the United Nations Adoption of the Convention on the Rights of the Child in 1989. And whereas National Child Day holds significance for Niagara, and it is one of the first communities in Canada to institute a Charter of Rights for Children and for Teens. And whereas this charter has since been endorsed by the Niagara Region, including 12 municipalities, all local school boards, and several local businesses and community organizations. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Vance M. Badaway, do hereby proclaim November 20th, 2011, as National Child Day here in the city of Port Coburn in recognition of our youngest citizens. Members of Council, mover and seconder, Councillor Doucette, Councillor Kenny, questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed, that will be carried. Thank you. Second proclamation, that whereas many dedicated citizens have joined with volunteer professional and industrial fire safety personnel as partners in fire prevention in a relentless effort to minimize loss of life, destruction of property, and damage to the environment. And whereas fire losses in Canada remain unacceptably high in comparison with those in other industrialized nations thereby necessitating improved fire prevention measures. And whereas it is desirable that information on fire causes and, recommend, and recommended preventative measures be dis disseminated during a specific period of the year, thereby ensuring that our community supports such a cause. 
And whereas the 2011 fire prevention theme for this period is protect your family from fire. Now therefore, I, Vance M. Badaway, Mayor of the City of Port Colborne, do hereby proclaim the week of October 9th to October 15th, 2011, as Fire Prevention Week here in the City of Port Colborne. A mover and seconder, please. Councillor Butters, what are you smirking at? <laughs> Councillor Butters. <laughs> seconded by Councillor Bodner. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That would be carried. Thank you, members. We'll now move on to... to <laughs> you're just pushing that thing up here, aren't you? Yeah, I see that. <laughs> uh, I do have minutes of boards, commissions, and committees. The members, you have them listed on your agenda. I will do them in block if you don't mind. If you want them separated, please let me know. With none. I do have the minutes of the Environmental Advisory Committee dated July 6, 2011, as well as the minutes of the New Community Center Advisory Committee dated April 6, 2011. The minutes of the Port Coburn Gateway Business Improvement Area Board of Management meeting dated September 12, 2011. And finally, the minutes of the Heritage Port Colburn meeting dated May 18, 2011. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Kenny, Councillor Demeray. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? That will be carried. I have any notice of the motion, guys? Finally, Madam Clerk, the introduction of the bylaws. <coughs> That the following bylaws be read a first, second, third time, and finally passed. Bylaw 56941511 being a bylaw to confirm the appointment of a town crier. Bylaw 56951261 being a bylaw to amend bylaw 43101462, a bylaw prescribing on and off street parking for persons with disabilities. Bylaw 56961211 being a bylaw to authorize entering into an encroachment agreement with Eataly Foods regarding 22 Clarence Street, Port Colborne. Bylaw 56971281 being a bylaw to amend bylaw 43101462, a bylaw prescribing on and off street parking for persons with disabilities. Bylaw 56981291 being a bylaw to amend bylaw 892000, being a bylaw regulating traffic and parking on city roads, Clarence Street. Bylaw 56991311 being a bylaw to provide for an appointment to the Port Colborne Seniors Advisory Council. And filing bylaw 56700131311 being a bylaw to authorize entering into a lease agreement extension with Zahid Khalid respecting 201 West Street Harbor Master Building Concession Operation. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Members of Council, mover and seconder, please. Councilor Steele, Councilor Doucette. Any questions or comments to the bylaws? All those in favor? Opposed, that will be carried. Madam Clerk, confirmatory bylaw. That the following bylaw by -law be read first, second, third time, and finally pass. Bylaw 57011311, being a bylaw to adopt, ratify, and confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the City of Port Colborne at its special and regular meetings of Council September 26, 2011. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Danch, Councillor Demeray. Questions or comments? All in favor? Opposed? That will be carried. Before I ask for a motion to adjourn, we have no reason to go into closed session because we dealt with the issues prior to this council meeting. So we have no reason to go into closed session, so I will be asking members for a, a motion to adjourn. But before I do that, I do want to let members of uh, the public know that our next meeting is on October 11th, 2011, beginning at 6.30 p.m. here in the council chamber, both Committee of the Whole as well as Council. And finally, uh, our last meeting of October is October 24th. 2011, once again, here at 6.30 p.m., Committee of the Whole and Council here in the Chamber. Members of Council, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Doucette and seconded by Councillor Butters. Any questions or comments to that motion? All those in favor? Opposed? That would be carried. Have a wonderful week. I adjourn.